Tito Ben, could you try to speak? Because, okay, your audio is not, uh, we cannot hear you. And I think we're good now. Good. Okay. Okay, so uh, let me share my, uh, uh, Dr. Justin, can you allow me to share, share screen? Uh, it's okay, Ben, okay now. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. So, um, can you see uh, my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So when first review these uh, questions, I did not uh, change you know, the numbering from the previous one. Question number five, seven, eight, nine, and 12, five questions. And then after this, we'll go to the lecture. Um, so uh, question number one, what can be done by the people to achieve economic sovereignty? when the state is bound by multinational agreements, which it cannot unilaterally escape from, it being bound by that which it cannot influence or change. So um, that's the first uh, question. Second, we'll describe briefly how the U.S. maintained its grip in the Philippine economy from the period U.S. colonial rule, 1898 to 1946, the post-war rehabilitation era, 1947-1970, and to the neoliberal market economy, 1971 to the present time. Question number eight, what were the endogenous, I mean to say internal domestic factors that weakened the resistance to the Philippines against U.S. dominance and allowed U.S. control over the Philippine economy? Number nine, is the consumerist mindset of the Philippines ultimately disadvantageous to the industrialization of the Philippine economy? What could be done to renew, transform the people's mindset from being consumption-oriented to becoming more savings investment-oriented? Question number 12, state whether the, uh, uh, the state may true or false and explain. Strengthening the easy features of separate groups, SSGs, associations, community-based organizations operating in their formal economy will help boost progress towards achieving the SDGs. Okay, so <clears throat> anyone who would like to break the ice to answer any of the questions? Or um, shall I volunteer? <laughs> Camille, are you ready? Would you like to answer any question, the questions? Um, yung sa number nine po, sir, yung pangalawang tanong, what okay. could be done to renew? Uh, Consumerist mindset. mindset. Yes, from consumer-oriented to becoming more uh, savings or, or uh, investment-oriented. Dun sa nabas Doon sa nabasa ko po, nananatili na mababa yung financial literacy ng mga Filipino. Kasi yung sa, nakita ko po na pag-aaral ng World Bank, tatlo lang sa pitong tanong tungkol sa mga simpleng konsepto sa numeracy, compound interest, inflation, investment, yung nasasagot ng mga Pinoy. Tapos nung 2021, meron ding survey ang BSP at 2% lamang ang nakatama sa tanong tungkol sa financial literacy. Okay. Meron din po na study yung ADB na sabi na ang financial literacy o financial illiteracy sa Pilipinas ay bunsod ng kawalan natin ng national strategy para sa financial education. Kaya ako po bilang isang teacher, elementary school teacher, masabi ko na isa sa solusyon sa isyong to ay ang pagkuturo ng epektibong pagtitipid, pangangasiwa at paggastos ng pera sa mga paaralan as early as kindergarten. Marami kasing pag-aaral na nagpapakita na gaya ng iba pang habits, yung financial management habits ay nag-uumpisa sa murang edad at nanatili hanggang pagtanda. Nakita ko po na may dep-ed order noong Hunyo 
2022, last year, tungkol mm-hmm. sa financial education policy. At naglalayon po ito na ituro sa lahat ng antasakay to 12 kung paano maging responsable sa pananalapi, maging mapanuri kung alin ang importanteng pagkagastusan, paano mamuhay ng naaayon sa kakayahan ng pamilya. Maganda po yung programa na ito, yung uh, sana lang maayos ang implementasyon, hindi yung nakasanayan natin na puro memorization. Sana mas practical yung approach para matutuhan talaga ng uh, kabataan yung uh, pagkitipid at pag invest ng tama. Ayun po sa akin, sir. Anong grade ang pinturuan mo? Ano? Um, kinder to grade 3 po. K to 3. Ayun. Alam mo, pagka tinuruan mo yan, magiging masugid sila. In fact, ang mga kabataan, mga hmm. batang ganyan, pag tinuruan mo, sila ang naging, ano, sila ang naging ganyo sa mga parents nila na mag-save. Oh, oh. Tama po, so, sir. How do, you, how do you propose to introduce yung concept na yan? Ano? Sa, sa paaralan po na kung saan ako nagturo, isa po siyang progressive school sa Quezon City, meron kaming entrepreneurship fair. Okay. Uh, bawat grade level, meron iisip sila ng service o produkto na ibebenta nila. Um, mm-hmm. Halimbawa, mga bata sa nursery, 3-4 years old, ang kanila ay ano, ang servisyon nila, inaisip nila ay mas- massage. Limang piso kada isang minuto. Tapos yung mga yaya, mga magulang nila, mga lolo-lola, iniimbitahan namin para pumunta. Tapos magbabayad sila, tapos mamasahihin sila ng mga bata. Para naman sa medyo mas malalaki, grade 3, grade 4, um, wow. meron na silang product. Kunwari ano, ice candy. Gagawa sila ng ice candy. Tapos kasama siya sa mga subject gaya ng math. Ituturo mm-hmm. ni teacher na oh, ito yung kailangan natin na pera. Mm-hmm. para bilhin to. Tapos, ganito natin kailangan ibenta pero para meron tayong tubo. Yes. Pagkatapos po nung fair, nung activity, merong um, debriefing din. Ito yung kinita natin. O, okay. Ano kaya, what worked, what did not work, what can we do next time? May okay. mga talaga po na, anong gusto niyong gawin sa kinita natin? O magbabutuhan sila na, o bibili tayo ng laruan, o hahati-hatiin ba natin? O gusto niyo bang ipunin para next time? Mm-hmm. may business ulit o pwede rin yung ibang bata na isa pa, i-donate na lang natin sa mga nasalanta. Kaya meron silang decision making, pinag-uusapan din po yung pera. Kaya ano siya, proseso siya, tsaka integrated po lahat ng subjects. Yun po yung nakikita ko po, sir. Na... Maganda ano yan. Kailan yung fair na yan, ano, Camille? Um, uh, every year po, twice, sa isang school okay. year. Dun sa school po kung saan ako nagturo dati. Is that in May or later part ng taon? Uh, naiiba-iba po eh, pero isang beses sa first at second quarter and then third and fourth quarter meron din po. Depende oh, okay. sa schedule po. Opo. Oh. Magandang ano yan, project yan. No? And uh, maybe one time we can report yung ano dyan. Kasi yan talaga yung kulang sa atin. No? Mm-hmm. Uh, yung savings mindset. Uh, Actually, uh, marami naman tayong mga savings uh, instruments sa Pilipinas like yung uh, sa ano pag-ibig ano uh, pag-ibig fund 6% per ano mga kanila ano interest ano so magandang ano yan magandang uh, uh, initiative yan and uh, I think uh, when we begin ano itong educating opening the mindset ng mga uh, batang Pilipino I, we will have a new generation. Alam mo, ginawa nila sa Thailand when I worked there, sa FAO, uh, paano in-introduce yung milk? Ano? Kasi like Filipinos, hindi milk drinking population ng mga Thai. Eh, no? mm-hmm. Ang ginawa nila, nag-sponsor ito mga milk companies ng uh, milk drinking, ano, itong uh, session sa mga elementary, uh, preschool, gano'n. No? At uh, ginawa nila for four years yun. After four years, uh, nakaroon ng uh, itong malaking demand. No? I mean, steady demand ang uh, fresh milk sa Thailand. So that's why yung fresh milk industry ng Thailand has become ano, ito, a big uh, business at naging sustainable siya. No? So ganun yung ano, eh, introduction of a new habit. Eh, no? Kung yung savings, ito sana natin yan sa ano, mga kabataan. Four years later, we will have a new generation no? na marunong uh, mag-save at saka invest. 
Thank you, Camille. No? Uh, okay. Um, yung iba. Um, Sir? Yung, yes po. Uh, sa number nine din po sasagutin ko. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes po. Aka, um, yeah, for the by the benefit of the class, ano, I'm I'm a former OFW. Okay. Tapos, yeah, and uh, now I'm also married to an OFW. Yung mga dati kong kaklase, alam na nila. But uh, yeah, I'm, I want to answer number uh, number nine. Kasi po, as, as we all know, no, uh, maraming, maraming OFW umuwi, bumabalik sa Pilipinas. They are penniless. No? Walang pera, walang mm -hmm. ipon, walang... Uh, and then they try to avail of the reintegration program no kasi um una ho um i i i hope what we should we should not also condemn yung mga OFWs kasi napaka napaka complex actually nito eh kasi minsan kasi naririnig ko eh kasi mga OFW mga consumerist mga ganyan palagi kasi yung ganun naririnig Pero I think we should also look at one side, the government side, yung yes. usually po yung reintegration programs that we are introducing to our, to our OFWs. Mm -hmm. Medyo, una-una, it's not comprehensive. At saka, late na rin, no? I think mm -hmm. we should introduce reintegration the moment that they start going mm -hmm. overseas. Ang nangyayari po kasi pagpabalik na sila. Yes. So, kumbaga nagastos na. So, there is no planning on the part of the OFW. Tapos number two po, yung uh, palagi silang sinisisi sa eh, masyado kasing consumerist, etc. Ganon, ang mga OFW. Na, I, I think I also have to uh, disagree with this. Actually, maliit lang po kasi ang kinikita ng maraming OFW eh. Akala kasi natin, maraking kinikita ng mga OFW. Actually, hindi. Kasi especially the women who are in elementary jobs, mm -hmm. malait lang talaga. What, what, whatever they they earn while overseas, actually, sakto-sakto lang talaga to meet their basic needs. Kaya pag uwi, wala talagang, wala talagang savings. And people tend to blame them na ganun. Uh, eh, medyo kwan ho, siguro, yun, ka, siguro, we, we have to, yun nga, tama ho, we have to introduce financial literacy at an early age. Uh, yun nga, bago pa mag-migrate or mag-isip na mag-migrate ang mga OFWs, I think we should start teaching them about financial literacy. Yun lang po. Thank you po. Do anong engagement mo ngayon? Nagtuturo ka ba? Ah uh, yes po nasa College of Mascom po ako. Sa College of Mascom. Aha. Uh -huh. So ano itong uh, uh, pero nagtrabaho ko as OFW. Yes po journalist po ako sa Hong Kong. Ah sa Hong Kong. 5 okay. years. Aha. Uh -huh. so, well, uh, maganda yung ano mo itong uh, uh, sharing mo ano. I have also uh -huh. worked in ano itong for example in Malaysia. At uh, mm -hmm. I have to interacted with yung mga OFWs doon. Kasi may sa kanila yung mga ano mga kasambahay. Correct po. Opo. Ngayon, uh, pare pare mo sila ng ano itong hinaing mo na wala silang ano sa ibis ng wala pa no yung sweldo ng ano. So, nagkanta mm -hmm. ako ng seminar. Mm -hmm. Yung mga kanya tapos tinuruan ko sila. Ano nyo, ano itong idisiplina din yung mga members ng family? Bakit kayo, tinatanong ko, bakit kayo ano, wala ng ano, ng, ano, ng uh, pera? Ang savings. Oo. Oh. So, marami sa kanila sinasabi nila, kasi sir, at, uh, merong ano, ito, bibilhin yung kapatid namin. Sinasabi namin, no? kung kami bibilhin ako kayo, wakay ha, huwag kami bumili sa ano, yung mga branded. Yan, no? mm. Tapos, every time meron silang ano, meron silang race. Sinasabi nila, uh, magkano na ang ano nila, yan, no? and then, yun nga, ang tendency nila is to, ano, to uh, present you ang kanilang uh, uh, buhay doon mm -hmm. sa bansa na marangya o kaya masagana. Ano? Mm -hmm. So, 
ang ang sabi ko ibahin natin yung drama ano hmm. kasi ang pamilya ninyo ay ano itong uh, sagana ka sa ano sa sweldo mo ganyan samantalang hirap ka sa ano naman talaga no how to Ayaw. make this meet ganyan so number one, sabi ko mag ano kayo mag isip kayo uh, magkano yung itatabi niyo para sa sarili ninyo wag hmm. lang sa pamilya ninyo ayan So pagka meron kayong ano itong sweldo na ganyan itabi niyo para sa inyo uh, tapos iba ibigay niyo yung ano itong whatever is left no mm-hmm. tapos tapos uh, tayo mga Pilipino ay madali tayong magbagbag kalooban natin pagka ano merong kamag-anak kapatid sabihin ate ko ya ganito nagkasakit o kaya bala kami pang tuition gano Eh sabi ko kung lahat ng problema na yan ay gusto mong anuhin itong i-respond ano with money ay eh, talaga mamumunubi ka yan. So initiate namin yung ano itong savings program ang uh, ano nga doon ay uh, mga ano to itong mga OFWs tapos uh, nag-aaral sila doon sa training center ng Philippine Embassy no. Kasi mm-hmm. noong natin do tinuro ko doon Tapos sabi ko, pakita niyo sa akin yung prueba na may savings na kayo. Alam mo, in uh, a year's time, lahat sila magkaroon sa savings. Uh, wow. Sabi ko, uh, hindi ano itong importante kung magkano. Ano? Hmm. The most important thing is the savings habit because the battle is in your mind, sabi ko. Yeah. Kung natin mo, hindi ka makakasave. Talagang hindi ka makasave, no? Mm-hmm. Pero kung makakasave ka ng piso araw-araw, kako, you have won already the battle because the battle is in your mind. Ano? So after one okay. year, sabi na, sir, hindi, months lang pala, after three months, sabi, sir, napakabagat po yung one peso per day. Pwede bang ano na lang? Itong kahit na 50, ano, 50 ringgit per month. Kaya po namin yan. Yeah. E, Bahala kayo, sabi ko. Ano? Ibig sabihin, sabi ko, ibig sabihin yan, kayo ay kumbinsido na na kayo nyo mag-save. You know? Correct. Ang, Correct. Ako, ang aking experience sa poor, no? the poorest sa India, yung mga nagkokorekta ng night soil. Mm-hmm. Doon, doon ko tinesting yung savings, ano, itong uh, habit na yan. So, lagi kong ano, itong tinatanong, ganun din ang tanong ko doon sa mga sudyante ko sa Kuala Lumpur, sino ang pwede makapag-save dito ng one rupee sa isang araw. Yun ang umusupin ako ng seminar. So ilan? Nagtaas ng kamay. Okay, hindi lahat. One rupee per week. Mas marami na. Okay, hindi lahat. Sabi ko, one rupee per month. Mas marami na. One rupee per year. Nagtawanan sila. Ano? So sabi ko, kaya kayo nagtawanan kasi yung one rupee per year, lahat kayo meron. Yan. So sapagkat meron kayong 1 rupee per year, lahat kayo ay pwedeng sumali sa programang ito. Uh, in other words, the savings ano itong program should not start with an amount that not cannot be ano hurdle by poor people. Ano? You start with small. Yan. Piso, araw-araw. Ay yung piso. Correct po. May nakikita ako diyan sa lansangan, wala gustong pumunot eh, no? Piso. But that ano itong sabi ko nga ang ang ano talaga batang talaga ay nasa mind kasi ang mga pores ang isip nila puro na nga ako eh magse pa ako no alam mo dahil ang 25 years later 30 years later ngayon there are 300 million poor people in India magkaroon ng savings and some of them have set up their own finance companies no? wow yes that's ano itong uh, I can send you a report of the World Bank to to ano for you to verify ano totoo talaga yan. And many of people in India they talk about linking banks and central groups or linkage banking. Dini sign to yon. Nagsimula ako ng ganun lang seminar sa kanila no. Yan. Namangha ngayon ano eh Governor of Reserve Bank of India. Uh, papaano ko ginawa yon? Sabi ko, you only have to ano to convince the poor that they can save and do not tell them to save 1,000 rupee. No? Tell them to save 1 rupee. Yan. Gano'ng kadalas yan, bahala sila. Once a year, okay lang. No? The most important thing is that they break the poverty mentality. 
Ganon din ang OFWs natin. Sa, sa Malaysia, na, na-prove nila na they can save. And then, alam mo, doon sa kanang Kotaraya, ang dami mga Pilipino doon ngayon, meron ng negosyo. Nagsimula sila sa maliit na savings. So, dito sa amin, sa Batasan Hills, ano, maraming poor dito. May mga hmm. kinausap ako, mga, ano, mga kaibigan ko na nakatira dyan. Ano. So, nagustuhan nila yung concept. Sabi nila, uh, Kuya Ben, pwede ba mag-seminar ka? Oh, so, uh, marami na akong na, ano, na itong nagawang ganyan. And uh, talaga, uh, pwede talagang mag-save ang mga may hirap. No? Uh, ang ano lang talaga ay uh, they have to win the battle in their minds. And mm-hmm. then secondly, you have to lower lower the hurdle ano? uh, para lahat ay maka, ano, makalampas. Kasi kung itataas mo yan, sabihin mo, sige, ang savings ay magsasimula sa 1,000. Eh, walang, walang ano dyan. Walang makapahirgal dyan. So, that is also the case for cooperatives. Kasi mga cooperatives, marami sila mga requirement ng capital na uh, share contribution. No? 1,500, katulad mo sa amin sa Convert to Versus Cooperative. I'm a member of Convert to Versus Cooperative. Ang capital requirement is 1,500. So, So, papakang mo na papasama dyan ang tour. No? Pero kung sabihin mo na kung meron kang piso, pwede ka nang sumama, ay maraming sasama dyan. No? So, yun, yun ang ano dyan. Um, um, kahit na ano, itong mga bata, no? pag save sila ng piso, I tell you, maraming sasabi dyan after a while, Ma'am, mabagal po yung piso, pwede ba ano, 5 pesos na lang? <laughs> So, itry nyo yan. Itry nyo. No? Yung ano yan. Uh-huh. So, yun lang ang aking ano dyan. Uh, uh, maraming konsepto ng savings. Uh, Sabi ko sa kanila, ng pera mo sa bunsa ay savings na yan. Bakit? Eh, yung banko, di naman yung sina- inaalam eh kung ano para, para saan yung ano mo, pera mo. Basta nilagay mo sa banko, savings na sa kanila yun. Deposit na yun. No? They don't uh-huh. ask you for your savings. So, yun ang ano, yun ang uh, naging experience ko. I have done it in India, I have done it in Thailand, I have done it in Malaysia, in Indonesia, you know? even in the Philippines during the time of Joe Willina when he was the ILG secretary. Nalaman niya, sabi Ben, pwede bang gawin natin yan? O sige, in one year's time, we move it as 150 million. No? Wow. Yeah, o ano talaga, talaga ano, ito, it's, it's possible, no? At ang pinakamagandang ano dyan, yung mahihirap talaga. Alam mo, isang ano ko, tekniko, tinatanong ko, ilang taon na po kayo? Ay, 60 years old na po ako. Ilang taon na kayo nagsimula mag, ano, magtrabaho? At 10 years old pa lang po, eh, ano, nagtrabaho na ako. O di 50 years ka ng ano? Ito nag, uh, uh, ano, itong nag-earning income. Opo. Eh kung halimbawa, ano, ito nag-save ka ng 1 rupee per day. Ilan masisave mo sa isang buwan? 30, marunong sila ng ano, mat, yung mga puro. No? Kasi <laughs> nag-uwi pa sila. Sa isang taon, 360, 365, ganyan. Sa loob ng 50 years, ilan na yun? No? E di siyempre hindi na makalculate na yun. No? Pero sabi ko, thousands of rupees na yun. No? Meron ka 10,000 rupee ngayon? Wala po. O, hindi ka nag-umpisa eh. No? So mga, mga ano mga idea that will tickle their mind no and then they will be motivated to say ganyan mga anak ko panay babae maliit pa lang i already encourage them to save you know uh, so nabibigyan namin sila ng ano itong kanilang stipend o kanilang allowance ganyan tapos sabi ko sa kanila huwag niyo ano hin gastuhin yan until the next time Magtipid kayo. Yan. Pa- hmm. mag- kung ano yung natipid nyo, dudublihin ko. Yan. So every year yan na, ano, na nagtatanong sila, alam mo ngayon, meron na kami family bank. Anong concept wow. ng family bank? It's just a fun. No? Sabi ko sila, instead na maghiram pa yun sa, ano, sa bangko, dito ka na maghiram. So hmm. yung akin, anak, nagkaroon siya ng ano, gusto bubili ng kotse, dito ka na maghiram anak. Huwag dyan sa ano, 
sa bangko. So yung four savings niya is the interest rate nung hiniram niya. Tapos, uh, kaya na ako magbabayad dahil, eh baka na ka. Kung gusto mo ng 10 years, the 10 years, pag ako'y nawala na, before the 10 years end, eh, quick na tayo. Yan. Sa bangko. <laughs> Maraming paraan, I tell you, maraming paraan. And yun ang tinuturo ko sa mga pamangkaw ko ngayon, yung tinatag na MYOB. Manage your own bank. No? So, yung mga pamangkaw ko, ordinary na ano lang yan. Ito mga trabahador, ano? uh, mayroong call center, ganyan. So, they go through the same struggle as everyone else. No? Nasabi ko sa nalala, kung wala kang savings, pagdating ng ano, old age ka ko, you might be dependent on your children. Yan. Okay, so magandang ano yan, no? uh, magandang ano to, itong discussion kasi uh, talaga maraming mga Pilipino uh, ang isang ano itong reklamo nga ng OFW sa, sa, ano, sa, sa Malaysia. Sabi na, Sir, ang alam namin, eh, palagi sila kumakain sa Jollibee. Eh. Pamilya niya, no? Kaku kasi ini-spoil niyo eh. <laughs> ini-spoil niyo pamilya no instead of ano itong teaching them discipline financial discipline no. Yan. So ngayon ang isip nila makabili sila ng bagong ano cellphone, bagong sapatos no. Uh, branded na ano na baro ganyan. Uh, ay ana uubos syempre yung ano yung pera niyo walang walang savings yung family ano. And you make them dependent on you. Yan. So anyway, yes. thank you, thank you sa ano mo, Lu, ano? Uh, who else would like to, ano, to share yung thoughts nila? John. Magandang, magandang gabi po, sir. Magandang gabi, John. Uh, siguro po, ano, mag-insert na po ako kasi parang in, in tune yung gusto ko pong i-share dun sa kababanggit nyo lang na napag-usapan. Okay, uh, kasi po, in terms of mentality, Uh, gusto ko po sana mag-focus doon sa number 8 and okay. uh, leading briefly to number 7. Uh, yes. With regards, and, uh, with, with regards ano, internal factors po na, na I was reflecting on, ang isa pong nakita ko na internal factor which weakens our resistance over foreign dominance in, in terms of mentality and culture ay yung education system po natin mismo. Uh, mm -hmm. Kasi basically, our education system has a mentality uh, to groom students towards employment. Yes. And yun, very apparent yun eh. Uh, o galingan mo, uh, student A, para pag naka-honor ka, kukunin kang empleyado ni ganitong company. Uh, o remember, pag naging cum laude kayo, Uh, hindi kayo ang mag apply kayo ang kukunin, kayo ang hahanapin ng mga korporasyon. So, uh, the education system itself, it is groomed to support the, uh, the capitalist no? the capitalist model, the neoliberal model, which is basically run by the, the global structure over our country. In the same way, uh, in terms of mentality po, na-inspire na, na ako doon sa kababanggit nyo nga lang po, Education itself, instead of being a spur, instead of being an inspiration to produce new knowledge, actually, ang totoo ngayon, ang nangyayari, uh, education is more of a requirement for employment. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yun nga, may tinatawag na nga ngayon po, di ba, na ano, na yung, yung inflation of inflation of education. Uh, yung, uh, uh, anong tawag dito, yung bagger sa SM, kailangan college level yung no klase tapos uh, and so on and so on kumbaga uh, it gets higher as as you go so uh, yung binabanggit ko nga po uh, the mentality for education it's more of a requirement talaga for employment so you when you enroll in school you just go through the motions You don't even question the topics and the influences that being inserted to the students uh, and not really to make new knowledge. Uh -huh. Ngayon po siguro, uh, i-connect ko lang po ng konti dun sa number seven. Medyo naputol po kasi yung research ko dito. But what I interestingly found out, uh, again, inspired po nung nakaraang lecture nyo when you 
uh, narrated yung history ng mga US policies uh, during the transition period. What I also discovered ay ano ang isa sa pinakahuling binitawan ng US government bago nila fully i turn over yung yung Commonwealth administration ang pinakahuling binitawan ng US is the uh, is the Ministry or the Department for Public Information which is actually the forerunner of the Department of Education so imagine nirelinquish na nila lahat ng mga government offices na no, for the Filipinos to manage it uh, post war Uh, post-Spanish war, going through the Commonwealth, and so on. Pero hindi nila binibitawan hanggang sa kaduluduluhan yung Department of Education to make sure that they inculcate in our mind, kaya po ano, nagsimula ako doon sa mentality and education, to inculcate in the in the Filipinos na uh, stateside is better. Yes. <laughs> the land of milk and honey. So so ganun and uh, come to think of it the the baka nga po medyo bitin nga po yung aking research uh, even I think the University of the Philippines is part of the of that transition period ng ano no yung US establishment ng education system here 1908 it wasn't until 1927 doon po sa binabasa ko na nagsimula sila mag-train ng mga Filipino teachers so 1927 pabalik puro US teachers ang nagtuturo sa mga eskwelahan. Ganun po yung ano, uh, medyo bitin pa po siya but uh, I'm taking your instructions sir, I'm putting things into writing, uh, inaayos ko lang po para maging nagandang pagbasa sa inyo. So I'm compiling this thing. So yung po yung nakita kong connection between number 8 and number 7. That really ano tong uh, ano itong eye opener no kasi uh, nung colonial period natin Imagine yung ano itong free willing uh, free willing na uh, uh, atmosphere for the Americans to bring US goods to the Philippines no kasi colony tayo eh no So uh, according to psychologists yung habit is formed within the shortest is six weeks or eight weeks ano About 21 days nga lang daw po eh <laughs> Pero mo yan no I mean ilang taon tayo ano ito oh. naging kami tapos After that, eh, post-colonial period, eh, inon pa rin na, na dapat yung mga goods ng Amerikano ay free eh, ano, free entry pa rin sa Pilipinas hanggang 1970. Ano? So, yun ang ano, itong uh, talagang uh, na-brainwash tayo ano, na mas maganda yung stateside. Pati si Garinio nga eh. Gusto ng Pilipinas okay. stateside eh. Yan, no? And ano nga po sir, sorry, may insert ko nga lang po. Yung nabanggit nyo nga po mismo kanina, yung nabanggit nyo nga po mismo kanina, when you try to influence the younger generation, you are assured of the of the next lifeline, uh, lifetime. Yung next batch ng lifetime, assured ka na na naipunla mo doon. Yung, uh, yung mentality, yung... Yung, uh, yung cravings. Yung, yung cravings nila, yung taste yung appetite nila na na develop na and uh, looking back kasi po uh, i'm also helping my my wife a little although siya talaga in tutoring our children we will hmm. still notice up to this point yung american influence kaya nga di ba may nakikita pa rin tayong a is for apple Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bakit hindi A is for Atis? Kasi nga it goes way back doon sa influence na yan. And even yung sa yung sa Pilipino balarila, yung oh. syntax formation, uh, 'di ba kasi ang English ay uh, subject verb predicate. Ganun ang syntax ng ano eh. And they try to do that sa Pilipino kaya ang syntax na ini-introduce sa Pilipino ay si si John Arieta ay tumatakbo. So subject uh, verb predicate. Pero sa Pinoy hindi nauuna ang verb sa Pinoy eh, mas normal sa atin. Tumatakbo si John. Hindi si titingnan mo si Uy, si John ay tumatakbo. Hindi naman ganoon tayo magsalita eh. Tumatakbo si John because yes. they're trying to retrofit the American mentality into the Filipino culture. Uh, kaya po ano yun napaka subtle niya almost yes, invisible almost invisible but napakalaki sa tingin ko po napakalaki niyang uh, internal factor which continually weakens our sense of self and submit continually submit ourselves sa influence ng west and the global scenario kung totoo sin po ngayon 
John, if you don't mind, what are you doing now? Uh, ako po ay, uh, I'm doing contractor work po uh, for business management. So right now, uh, I also help companies. Uh, in line po sa ating pinag-aaralan, I, I assist mga NGOs po in designing their programs. At wow. isa nga po yung sa ini-introduce ko nga rin sa kanila, kaya natutuwa po ako sa usapin natin kasi I'm trying to lobby na we cannot count on donations and uh, uh, yun nga, donations to fund our work. We have to find a way na unti-unti magpasok na tayo ng social enterprise Yes. Bukod sa magiging self-sustaining tayo, we're trying to teach our uh, our clientele, our beneficiaries na maging ano rin, maging self-sustaining din. Hindi parang feeling ko po kasi hindi na uso nga ngayon yung we're counting on we're counting on donations and funds. Uh, kaya uh, I'm I'm really happy to with our course kasi somehow naka nakalibre ako ng framework at saka theory. <laughs> <laughs> Alam mo, John, no? I'm interested in what you're doing. Kasi I've been, I've been talking to my colleagues doon sa uh, national ano itong social entrepreneurship development roadmap no? This is a um, uh, network of uh, mga companies, business companies, foundations, cooperatives, associations, academe. You know? uh, at uh, pinupush nila yung development ng social enterprise in the Philippines. And I, uh, ano, itong uh, proposed, no? The setting up of a financial intermediation system for social enterprise. Gusto nila, no? Uh, siguro, what we can do is, sapagkat meron naman akong, alam niyo na, sinabi ko sa inyo, meron akong consultation time, ano, during the week. If you are, ano, itong uh, uh, amenable to the idea, we could set up a discussion, no? On this. Uh, Para sa ganun, kasi design, ano ka rin, design engineer ka rin. Uh, ako, I'm also a program designer, pero hindi yung computer program. I design, yes, yes. Program, I design programs, yan, mga development programs, ganyan. So, yung linking bank setup group is one. No? Meron kami model one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D, ganyan. No? So, uh, ito, maganda ito kasi... Uh, yung ating topic mamaya is embedding ECC in local communities. Again, designing the program is quite important. No? Yung skill mo will be relevant to this. No? Now, si Camille naman at saka si, ano, si uh, Lou, no? they're involved, both are involved sa uh, uh, pagtuturo, no? if I'm not mistaken. No? Si, si Lou ay sa College of Mascom. Si Camille naman nagtuturo sa uh, mga ano itong um, nasa elementary ano at saka preschool I would like to have a discussion on I'm interested ano uh, kung ano yung madidesign ni Camille no, na curriculum para sa mga bata to introduce financial literacy at saka savings ano yan so that's another ano itong uh, probably discussion group we can have uh, and then we can organize that in one of the ano itong consulting hours ko ano uh, kasi nga we could not ano we could not insert that dito sa ating ano eh, sa ating uh, discussion kasi very ano very uh, uh, thematic uh, specific ano but i'd like to do that because i'd like you to really ano itong uh, understand how to embed SSE in what you are doing. You know? Later on, you will know that, uh, you will uh, understand that embedding ECC is actually changing the mindset, no? changing the mindset of people. Yeah. Kaya whether they are, uh, ano ito, mga bata, no? school children, or mga ano na, adults na involved in development work, kailangan din ng framework how to ano, itong restructure yung ating development approach ano, sa Pilipinas. Um, kasi uh, kahit na ilan lang tayo, we can contribute in ano, itong uh, developing systems ano, that can be useful for many organizations, NGOs, cooperatives. Yan, no? So yun. Uh, thank you, ano, John, no, for, for that. And really, uh, I would like to encourage you to ano, to Uh, set a, a time no, na mag-consultation tayo and we can invite no, members of our 
class to join ano uh, si uh, ano si Camille and maybe si si Lou uh, can have ano itong join together no uh, kasi communication maganda yan no how will you communicate that no okay so who else would like to share yung thoughts nila maganda itong discussion natin kasi um it uh, it can ano it can uh, we can apply it sa ating mga ginagawa uh jr uh what do you think about this ano ang mga issues na gusto mong ano i-address yes sir um think ko yung sa akin uh, related din dun sa sinabi ni uh, john and directly related to what do and um can you uh, said about number nine, but i'll try mm-hmm. to answer um number eight um ano ba yung indigenous uh, factors that weaken the resistance of philippines against us dominance mm-hmm. um in my initial list i had um two that's uh, consumerism and um local and overseas migration uh, but mm-hmm. i'm not saying it's um the philippines to blame um because of that it's because of the system that governs um or that uh, that um the neoliberal market economy put forward um um naging resulta siya noon at na-embed sa uh, Filipino culture mm-hmm. so for example for consumerism um alam natin um nagdominate talaga yung US sa Philippine market um even before um uh, World War II um in the 1950s nagboom ang mall sa US but in 1935 um they established malls already in the Philippines that's um um during the uh, uh war period bago pa mag post war period and um it has uh, been embedded to the um, mindset of the Filipinos that um so products and even some goods and services coming from abroad specifically the US are for us to consume and that's centralized in um malls and supermarkets etc so na embed sa atin yan and and it's been like that until now and tingin ko na reinforce yan sa online even online markets and in the advent of the fourth um industrial revolution including yung mga um, marketing strategies that came from the US for example even um using facebook or social media yeah. we know that um our previous um actions and options choices informed our algorithms mm-hmm. and um we know also that in the fourth industrial revolution the advent of um artificial intelligence and theory of um um uh, internet of things um um what is this uh so yon halimbawa um mag chat ka lang sa using messenger you just ask for one product and then you will see your other apps for example advertising that product and um um i have a privilege of working with someone in the family that uses um facebook ad for example and nakakagulat yung mga features noon ang andaling mag-target ng mga consumers and i think um the technological advances the fourth industrial revolution artificial intelligence advanced um um the uh, consumerism mindset of the filipinos and filipinos are not the ones to blame it's the system and then second um local and um, overseas migration yes i think um following the um uh, the washington consensus and aligned to that um for the longest time the uh, primary uh, measure of development for them for the west is the gdp and gdp yes. per capita for example and um we all know that um trickle down effect is illusive it's not even true um for in some ca- in most uh, cases and sometimes the well most of the time the um wealth of the nation is centralized to the 1% and even geographically centralized to urban areas so people um globally people would go to richer countries to find opportunities and locally people from provinces gida areas geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas go to urban areas to find work as john mentioned it's not even for livelihood um for enterprise it's to find work um based on my personal experience when um typhoon super typhoon or that happened in the Caraga region and um southern um southern late and the Visayas even Bohol region 6 and 7 um we did um massive uh, cash for work um 
covering 40,000 um, households. Mm -hmm. um, when we provided cash, we asked um, through um, post-distribution monitoring, what will you do uh, with your cash? Uh, first thing that they said, I will do, use this as transportation to go out of my province and look for work outside to recover mm -hmm. from the devastation of the typhoon. So mm -hmm. that kind of mindset. And also, uh, uh, for example, when we did the um, household data uh, base, when I looked at it, the um, average um, household member per family is even lower than the national average, which is five. The average, for example, in the province of Dinagat Island is three, not even lower than five. Mm -hmm. And then we, when we explored further, why is that? Uh, they went to Surigao City, to Botuan, um, mm -hmm. to Manila, um, to find work in Cagayan de Oro. So, ganun yung nangyari. So, first is consumerism and second is um, um, local and overseas migration. And it's because of the system. It's not really the Filipinos to be blamed yeah. on that. Yung ano mo, JR, no? you are involved in uh, ano, itong community development with CFI, uh, FSI? Yes, uh, yes, sir. Um, I'm a humanitarian, so um, we do respond to displacements caused by natural hazards or um, armed conflict. So yes. we operate in the Philippines, Myanmar, and Vietnam at the moment. Tapos, I think one time you uh, mentioned na uh, uh, you have uh, your your organization has impacted fifty thousand people. Yeah, that's uh, the number already, sir, of the household members. So when when I mentioned that I was talking about self help group, but okay. um there are hundreds of not not, not hundred but tens of self help groups that um were um in well they're not calling themselves um SHGs but um using the features of SHGs you will see that they are really SHGs. So yes. they are residents um, of Marawi City and other provinces in the Naudel Sur. They're basically the um, survivors of Marawi Siege of 2017. And you're managing a project there in Marawi? Yes, until now, sir. Part oh. of the recovery and um, reconstruction following the siege. How, how long still will, you, will your project come out on, uh, continue? Um, we still have one ongoing through 2024, but in terms of our programming in the area, we committed to stay at least uh, through the end of 2025. Even if we don't project, we can find um, other um, opportunity for, um, for um, doing services in the area. But for now, we're lacking through 2024. And I think it's yung mga informal groups ng ganon kasi. Um, summons organizations really um, um, requiring um, a lot of human resources if you want to focus in um, supporting livelihood activities of those who survived um, the uh, Marawi siege. So what we did is organize small groups and then mm -hmm. replicate it to other areas. Mm -hmm. So we trained just a few people and then the leaders of those small groups would replicate the training that we conducted. It can be, for example, um, basic financial management and bookkeeping, financial literacy. Yes. Um, even um, for now, for example, in one of the um, um, biggest transitory sites, while well, they're waiting for them to return to the ground zero, um, mm -hmm. the Sari Sari source owner there, if you ask for a blue book, they would be able to provide you a blue book. Blue Book is basically where they do the basic bookkeeping so they can track their um, income and um, ultimately savings. Yes. Uh, would you be interested, JR, no? if uh, we organize a consultation, consulting and consulting? Because you see, you have a very uh, rich ano, itong, uh, project no? with the side help groups. And maybe uh, we could explore the possibility of connecting your project to mga charity funds. No? Kasi humanitarian yung ano niyo dyan, no? uh, So uh, uh, I'm, I'm uh, thinking of making use in our consulting hours uh, to have a discussion on this particular yung ano mo, mm -hmm. yung project mo. Ano? Are you willing to do that? Sure, sir. That would be um, helpful for us. Kasi one of your classmates, si Tim, is engaged in ano, itong uh, uh, impact impact investment, ano? so these things. I'm a lucky project. Mo, uh, maybe we could discuss this and um, 
see how uh, we could ano itong uh, um, develop you know a campaign ano para maka-generate ka ng resources to ano to lengthen yung project na yan no? sino bang donor niyo diyan kinong anong country Australian government sir uh, which was sorry Australian government DFAT Australian ito man mm -hmm. okay oh yung ano yung ano bang ano nila pangalan ng kanilang uh, formerly AusAid but now they're called uh, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade but oh. they're keeping the kangaroo AusAid logo yeah. AusAid no yeah uh, that's good kasi yung AusAid na very active sila sa ano sa Pilipinas no yeah okay so uh, I will set that ano itong JR ano and uh, we can discuss this because Mar marami yung ano mo eh, outreach mo eh, no? Uh, talagang ano, talagang uh, uh, very rich yung ano. And then uh, the the task of the challenge of how can we invent yung SSE, no? In these uh, localities. Um, even in the ano, itong, uh, process of uh, looking at what you're doing, ay makakaroon tayo ng lessons na that can be ano, itong uh, um feedback you know, to this course kasi yung sabi ko nga from the very first time I'd like to make use mga uh, ano ninyo experience niyo to put more flesh you no know, sa discussion sa itong course na ito is is eh hindi lang hindi lang ideas hindi lang mga abstract ideas and but concrete na ano concrete na mga experiences ano at uh, yun nga itong if uh, you are able to do that then we win another potential resource person for this course in the future. No? Uh, yun naman ang aking iniisip from the point of view of the ano, itong course na ito. No? So, thank you, ano, itong uh, GR. Sino pa? Uh, who else? Um, si Tin and Carl. No? Who will uh, go first? Carl, ikaw? Una? Yeah, magandang Magandang gabi po sa lahat, uh, sir, at sa mga kaklasik ko. Ako'y una, humihinga ako na pumanhin. Ako'y hindi nakapasok nung nakaraang uh, klase, no? Nung Mars. So, uh, March, uh, I think, uh, uh, ano, February, February 28, ano? At uh, 27, so medyo conflicts, naging conflict sa schedule ko, super busy. Uh, ang ang gusto kong i-share sir is uh, itong ano, itong uh, indigenous uh, number 8 and then related din sa number 9 ano. So, yung yung experience kasi sa ako bilang uh, involved talaga sa grassroots organizing at lalo na sa sa konteksto ng faith-based organizing so basic ecclesial communities no dito po sa Diocese of Nova Liches hmm. um uh, ang dami din naming efforts na mabuo nga ito mga socio-economic uh, programs kaya mayroon din mga mga BEC inorganize din namin into SHEG yeah. kaya mayroon din kami mga mga grupo ng SHEG mayroon din kaming SHEG na formal a uh, formal na group mayroon ding check na uh, informal in a sense na in encourage talaga namin yung mga BEC members na mag-organize and then so in terms of indigenous may mga efforts talaga na ma-counter pero yun nga ang ang, ang laging hamon is uh, aside sa commercialism yung yung napakalakas talaga yung entertainment uh, industry din ng Philippines na of course kaakibat talaga diyan yung yung consumerism ano uh, yun yung ano yung nagsilakasan yung mga uh, mga entertainment no um, mga hmm. ano so parang yun yung kalaban kahit nga yung mga weekly bible sharing namin kasi nagsimula na nga din nga yung mga uh, bible sharing uh, hmm. mga prayer groups ang kalaban lagi yung mga telenovela no at saka yung mga programs <laughs> kaya may mga hindi na hindi nakakadalo <laughs> kasi mga na nood so isa yon sa mga ano yung mga effort na sa baba galing sa grassroots talaga ay ma-develop ma itong 
ito ng mga an, uh, sarili, sarili mga initiative. Kahit nga kami sa mga staff namin, kasama staff, nag-initiate din kami ng ng savings program yes. among ourselves. Uh, yun lang ang problema talaga. Uh, yung kakibat nitong mga challenges nito, yung uh, well, yes, consumerism tapos coupled by itong utang mentality din, ano? Na, yes. Kaya nga nagkalat itong utang na hindi na babayaran, ano? Kasi magaling mangutang, yes. hindi rin nagbabayad. So, yes. eh, ayun, parang umiikot lang talaga yung problema. Eh, kahit ang mga BEC members, yun din ang naging problema. Kasi nagkasiraan yung mga mga relasyon ng kapitbahayan, ng mga neighbors. Because of that, ano uh, makuha lang yung trust, mautangan. Uh, hindi naman madami. Ilan lang naman yan. Pero it really destroys the relationship eh. So okay. nagkaroon ng ganun. So yun yung mga uh, pero may mga good stories kami na talagang uh, yung story of Damayan, I think part yan ng number 8 yung yung ano niya uh, marami pa ring Damayan talaga. Yung tinatawag naming kung may nangangailangan talagang ang nagmo-mobilize. Kaya importante talaga din yung Yes, may mga problema, may mga concern, pero once na build talaga yung genuine relationship ng among the neighbors, hmm. uh, may mga ilang problema, may mga ilang concern, pero uh, nananaig yung tulungan, lalo na sa problema. Kasi very concrete yung nangyari itong, ang dami kasi mga AJK victims uh, during talagang... Uh, yung war on drugs ng Duterte yes. administration. Ang dami pong victims ng AJK uh, dito sa ano no, uh, Quezon City and then Cal- North Caloocan at in fact Caloocan. Kaya parang actually center ng AJK itong mga area ng Quezon City and Caloocan eh. Kaya ang ang immediate talagang na napupuntahan ng mga mga families lalo na poorest of the poor naman talaga itong mga EJK victims hmm. ay yun din talagang mga mga BEC members mga kapitbahayan na sila sila mismo nagpalitan magbigay magdadala ng bigas kasi yung si Pino may anim na pamilya mga bata pa yung mga anak yung yung uh, father na yun yung victim ng EJK uh, yun lang yung nag-iisang naghanap buhay sa pamilya tapos hmm. yung asawa ay Uh, kakapanganak lang. So talagang walang naghahanap buhay. Tapos lahat ng mga anak na lima, pang-anim itong pang- pinanganak, lahat ng lima ay walang bata pa. So ang nagbubuhay practically ay yung immediate community na yeah. nagtutulungan. So yun yung nakikita kong ang, ang isa talagang susing ano, ng, ng pangsapin no? na yung impact ng itong hirap ay ito din talaga strong community yung strong sense of solidarity uh, within the community you know? at feel na feel yan sa mga may hirap tapos uh, yun din ang ano namin kasi related sa 8 yung 9 yung yung mindset nga you know, uh, doon din yan pinapasok namin sa aming organizing din na uh, hindi sapat talaga yung dasal lang ano nag nag aaralan ng Biblia dapat sinasabuhayan kaya yun ding mga ganung formation small savings at ito nga parang na, na enhance din yung aking uh, conviction and ano ditong mga natutunan ko at narinig sa mga sharing kasi um mayroon kasi kaming bagong program na tinayo ngayon na uh, I like Kapwa Community Schooling. It's an uh, it's an alternative learning system ng ng mga informal out of school youth, no. Uh, mayroon itong support, may mga nakakuha ng funding nito. Kaya no. ano ito, uh, may mga allowances. So yun ng parang nisip ko ngayon, part ng uh, ano fighting this consumerist uh, mindset ay ito ding 
instilling to them the uh, financial literacy and yung saving mentality nga ano yung yes. uh, sa tingin ko yun yung immediate kung mapupulot ngayon kasi itong mga gusto kong mangyari siguro ng ano nito is dahil may monthly allowances itong mga estudyante ito uh, oh. baka i-encourage kong out of that allowance na natatanggap nila from the from the ano uh, benefactors oh. eh, baka pwedeng doon magsimula just to instill the the mentality of ano no saving the value of saving kasi uh, parang ang ano ko hindi pa pala namin to na, na nasimulan so yun yung isang ano ko ngayon of course uh, tuloy-tuloy na strengthen and yung connected din sa sa, sa nine nga is uh, financial literacy talaga at yung value ng saving na yes. na genuinely talagang mukhang ito yung need na na ma-instill no sa grassroots communities. So mm. yun po yung parang may share ko dito na bahagi po. Yan. So you are working sa anong anong city ano? Uh, uh, ang Diocese of Novaliche sir ay covered ng uh, second uh, port and six fifth and sixth districts ng Quezon City and first district of Caloocan City yun po yung uh, land area uh, ano niya area of responsibility ng sakop ng diocese ang laki pala laki Pero po actually po city, sir para ano yan Caloocan. yung yung area na yan sir parang yan po yung center ng urban poor eh na nandiyan po kasi yung dito sa area ng North Caloocan yun po kasi yung uh, relocation site mga 1980s so yung mga middle class of poor Diyan din. At ganun din dito sa ano po, yung Batasan, uh, Payatas, yan po ang mga center po ng mga urban poor. Eh. Oo. Alam mo, Carl, no? uh, ang kaibigan, isa kong kaibigan dating mayor ng Quezon City, si John Simon. Ay, opo. Uh, opo. Eh, napaka-active niya sa BEC. No? Ay, opo, opo. Kilala ko po yun siya, sir. Kilala mo naman siya, no? So, kung gusto mo, karon tayo ng ano, itong uh, focus group discussion, isa sa mga consulting hours ko, sama ko si John. Saka marami akong kakilala dyan sa ano, itong isang uh, consultant ng DTI, malakas din ang ano yan sa community organizing, no? at saka focus din siya sa ano, itong mga BEC. Pwede natin pag-usapan yan, ano, itong card, no? paano ano yun yan. Kasi napaka-rich nung ano mo, itong kumbaga constitutive ang laki-laki ano uh, so uh, pati nga si ano eh dating uh, DIG secretary Joey Lina ngayon presidente ng ano ng uh, Manila Hotel no uh, pagka pinag-uusapan itong uh, tinatawag namin yan noong bayanihan savings eh excited yun siya no so gusto mo ano Carl we can devote ano siguro uh, a session Uh, in in a week ano to discuss focus tayo diyan sa ano sa ginagawa mo uh, para sa ganon uh, ito kasi ang ating next na lesson kasi embedding SSE ano eh mahirap intindihan yan unless talagang ginagawa natin sa ano eh, sa ground eh, no so yon if you are ano willing uh, car no I'm very much willing to have a focus group discussion with you uh, na tingnan natin yung ano, mga possibilities of uh, developing savings program ng inyong ano, mga BEC. Yan, very willing po, sir. I'm... Good. Sige. Opo. Hmm. Kasi ano, itong I can bring in yung mga kakilala ko. Uh, si John Simon, alam niya yung ano, eh, itong approach na yan. Eh. Uh, yung uh, Savings approach kasi matagal na kami ano, kasi ginawa namin yan. Yung sinabi ko kanina na ginawa ni Joey Lina sa DIAG, kasama siya doon eh. So alam niya yan. No? Good. So thank you. So uh, next si Tim. Tim. Good evening classmates. Um, hi Dr. Ben. I'm sorry I apo yeah. er, apologize for not keeping my camera on the whole time. I'm actually feeling under the weather, but trust oh. me, I'm, I'm listening to the very, very wonderful discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and it really kept me, it really made me think about a lot of my own journey in development. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think it's hard for me to pinpoint which question I want to answer, but I guess starting with, you know, number eight, um, okay. I recall one of my classes, I think, with Dean Guy when she was talking about um, the development of underdevelopment, right? That's really what happened in the Philippines. Yes. I mean, I'm a martial law baby, not to give so much of my age, right? So um, I think the Amer America really kept its, its hold on us. And I agree with um, some of my classmates who discussed that education is one way that they, they really kept hold. It's not just, you know, training us to be workers, but even the, the books that we used, I mean, I myself received like an American education, even culturally, right? Now you have the K-pop phenomenon, right? Like with the Hallyu, is it called? Where it's it's in being integrated, K-pop, K-makeup, K K K-drama. But for us specifically, you know, in the Philippines, I think our mindset, what subconsciously, you know, I think U.S. really kept its hold on us on our education and even on our language. If you look at all our neighbors, mm -hmm. English is not the predominant language, but for us in our schools, in everyday use, you know, the, our signs are in English. Our, mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting, you know. Um, I was also, just for disclosure, I also studied in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. which used to be a colony of Spain and then also became now a, a colony of America and it's now a commonwealth. Mm -hmm. But it's very interesting that they maintain their sense of who they are. You know, they, they study in Spanish, they speak in Spanish. It was very rare for me to really talk to someone who was very comfortable or flu fluent in English, like their initial mm -hmm. go-to is, is Spanish. So I think language is really key, you know. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of that. Um, and even culturally, I don't know if for people here in my age in, in this class, but even culturally, for me, like I grew up with Sesame Street. I didn't have Batibot yet at my age. It was Sesame Street and um, super friends you know it it was it's just very much i don't know if the word was brainwashed but you know from from being a martial law baby and then people pow and then you know i in my high school you're seeing the whole debate about the u.s basis you know and how they were with us and how we relied on them um and it was only witnessing you know senator salonga fighting uh, to evict them, you know, and that whole controversy. I remember even that there was no, um, there was no Philippine cable, but for some reason, growing up, we had access to American cable through the bases. Um, and also just this, you know, it, I guess what I'm just saying is, it's just sad. It's just sad that we were, as a nation, we have so much potential, but we're just encouraged to be underdeveloped for the sake of the development of someone else. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? And, yeah. and I didn't even realize that, right? I, and my parents, maybe they didn't even realize it, but that's kind of like, it just, I don't know if we're a very accepting country, like um, for also for disclosure, I lived in New York for 20 years. That's where I practiced my social work. I got my master's there in NYU and you know, if you go to other countries, you'll, you'll see other cultures, right? That of immigrants. But malakas pa rin yung identity nila. There's Korea town, there's Japan town, there's India town, there's China town. But there's no Philippine town, right? We, as, we assimilate as a culture. I was guilty of that. So hence, I'm, you know, on consumerism, even, even when you're an immigrant, the consumerism is so strong to become like your neighbors, you know? Like, um... You know, as an immigrant for 25 years in, in the States, I, I have friends who are Pinoy and they have children who are considered Phil-Am, right? But then they were more Am than Phil-Am. You know, you don't, but if you if you meet our Korean counterparts, our Chinese counterparts, their children, even if they're born there, know the language, know the food, know, know the culture, right? So it's just a sad reality. I don't know. And even now with the whole conflict of in China, you know, I don't know what we're so dependent on the U.S. being our savior. I don't know. I don't know what's the answer, how to really break that. But I will share 
that I was very proud of the education that I got from UP Diliman. I, I studied uh, in so I studied social work in UP Diliman when I applied for my master's in NYU. And uh, you know they they had to of course validate first. They had to validate first. Was your bachelor's from UP College of Social Work good enough to get you into master's or will you still have to do some bachelor's, you know, at the college before you can get your master's? So I remember having to like defend my college education, my UP college education to a panel um, at NYU. And classmate, believe it or not, after deliberation, right, of course, I was so nervous when they came back, they even deemed that my UP education was superior wow. to their college <laughs> education. Not yeah. only that, they advanced me a whole year. Wow. I, I came into my NYU education. So, of course, I saved hundreds of thousands, right? Um, because I came into my second year first. So, that really made me like, wow. So, you know, we don't have to always be the second class citizens, right? I mean, that was, I was so proud of that moment, right? Now, parang, wow, they, they evaluated the field placement that we did. And the, uh, I mean, they were just mind blown of the, what I had to do. Because in, in, the, for, in order for you to take your bachelor's in social work, for you to pass, you have to, do, you have to render a thousand hours of service, right, in the community. And I guess when I described and I showed them, and it has to be documented verbatim every time. And when I showed them everything that I did, and it, there was this was before computers, right? It was all handwritten. Mm -hmm. um, naturally, they were just amazed um, that that's the kind of education you got. So that made me think. Again, mm -hmm. Dr. Ben, you're correct. It's really in the mindset because that made me then think. So then if my social work education was superior to a New York school, right, what else is superior? And so that's why I decided to come home here and take my, my PhD here with you in this class. And also to be another disclosure, I, that's also why I decided to bring my daughter home. I, I had the option to live throughout my whole rest of my life in New York. I was already a director of a foundation there for 15 years. I was an adjunct faculty also at NYU, but I didn't want her to grow up Phil Am, but more Am, you know? So I literally packed up all of my things, came here, knew nothing about social work, practice here, because I never really worked here. And then I enrolled her in school, made her chagana lang to learn Filipino and be exposed to Jollibee and Tagalog and the Philippines, you know, and travel. So I was very happy that I could gift that to her. I know it's a privilege, really, not every immigrant family has that option mm -hmm. and I'm very grateful to the university because as soon as I moved here it's the university I first went to because I didn't know anyone else mm -hmm. right so here I am now taking your class and also teaching teaching in UP but um, I guess I, I, I really believe this is a very crucial time to be a development worker I think it's amazing now that we're talking about development and at the same time talking about economics because before it was very, very clear, you know, that business and development, it's like church and state, profit, nonprofit, right? It, it wouldn't be married. But now it's very exciting to see, to hear the word social enterprise or solidarity economy, you know, and I'm, I'm actually telling my students, if you want to be a good development worker, you should be aware of economics. You should take economics um, electives because if you don't understand economics, how are you going to solve poverty, mm. right? Which we have to understand how to earn money, how to keep it, how to fund our programs because we won't be able to sustain. Yes. So that's all. And uh, thank you, classmates. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Tim. Uh, you know, your uh, exposure is quite uh, broad and very rich. Um, you see, my, my approach in teaching is really you know, to, to uh, enjoy uh, students as colleagues in developing a system, yeah? Uh, and I think this class, you know, has all that, uh, what it takes, you know, to be able to develop that. And uh, Tin, I would like to encourage you to be part, you know, of these dialogues with uh, Carl, with uh, JR, with John, you know, because of your broad exposure. And I know that uh, uh, you have ex experience, you know, in talking to corporations, you know, and their CSR, 
So um, what I'd like to, to do in this class is uh, to create a laboratory you know, uh, using what you are doing right now you know, uh, on how uh, we could embed SSE in local communities. We may not be able to complete uh, the process, but at least uh, if we uh, develop ourselves into a, a group, you know, uh, that we could interact, we could still continue interacting and uh, maybe the next time this uh, course is offered, you can come in as resource persons also. Yeah. So but, this, yeah, then. No, but Dr. Ben, I think aside from consultation hours, it's okay to also have it during this class. You know, I, I feel like uh, with people's schedules, etc. Because I also have other classes I'm teaching. So just, just disclosing that that it might be more convenient to have also those dialogues. Yes, actually, uh, the dialogues, you know, um, will be more substantive because in class like this, we are constrained, you know, in uh, delivering uh, the uh, thematic topics uh, that we have already uh, submitted. You know? Uh, to the to the college, you know, but really uh, the the brass tax is in the dialogue, you know. Uh, how can we learn, you know, from uh, the uh, experiences of each other? We have people like uh, Lou and Camille involved in education. You also Tien is involved in education. You know? How do we develop this course? How how can we, you know, uh, cascade this in? Uh, uh, let's say uh, in uh, uh, elementary schools, you know, high schools, etc. You know? And then we had a rich uh, uh, experience uh, in the hands of Carl, J.R. John, you know. So uh, we have until June, you know. Uh, but if we have this uh, dialogue, you know, we can exchange ideas. Um, Hopefully, we could uh, cascade this, you know, to our respective uh, organizations and networks, and um, uh, the first time that I uh, had discussions with Dr. Justine, I was saying that in the in the in the future we need to cascade this to undergraduates, you know, and must uh, students taking masteral course. Uh, but of course, the first step is to find these, these students you know, who, can, uh, who can serve as resource persons. You know. So this is why I thought that this uh, consulting uh, period, I think I have uh, uh, shared this with you. I'd like to use this for that purpose, you know, to, to really enrich uh, our uh, academic uh, learning uh, with the, the experience that we are going through right now. So thank you everyone. Um, um, if Dr. Justine would, would uh, like to comment, if not, you know, we can go ahead. But Dr. Justine, I'd like to give you the floor with something to say. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go to the no? Um, I was just thinking, uh, yung mga share ng ati mga klase. So, mag recite din ako. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, like what what Tin was saying, no. So I was, uh, I think John Ariat is here, no. So I was sharing that S S D three O three class, no. That society and culture, they really go together, no. Even in times of change, no. Talagang you change one, you change the other two. Mm -hmm. So yung sinishare natin kanina, uh, the literature that we read, the movies that we watch, the music that uh, we listen to and sing, no. And even the music that we dance to, no. Uh, yung nga, some uh, Western siya, no? So before we called it uh, colonial mentality, no. But later on, it gets embedded na, no. Na kahit sa neo colonial, we we get to have that identity already. No? So I was reflecting kanina yung sa semiotics na signifier and signified, no. So if we have the signifiers, yung sinasabi ka siniti, the signs are in English, no? And then later on, we absorb them uh, and we think, no? The, yung, yung, yung 
the thing that we signify is already in, in the Western language. So language is very important. Mahalaga yung, yung wika. No? So, yun. So, in short, siguro, it's, it's the culture. No? Culture ang... Uh, um, because we had uh, like years of uh, Islamization and then years of Americanization and uh, uh, Christian... Uh, Christianization, no? and then Protestantism. No? So yung, kay, uh, yung analysis ni ano ng tatlong, tatlong um, kinds of uh, transition na throughout history no? na colonial. So siyempre mahirap baguhin yun. No? Mahirap uh, banggayin yun. Pero I think solidarity economy may have a... Well, siyempre solidarity economy, social economy is not... Uh, Filipino concept in itself. No? So, meron siyang pinanggalingan ng ibang bansa rin. Uh, pero makatulong siya. No? If it's a way of life, then uh, it might also change our culture. No? Yeah. Yun muna, Dr. Ben. Thank you, Dr. Justin. So, let me now uh, go to my lecture. I will uh, uh, Stop the sharing with this, and then uh, I'll share my uh, uh, PowerPoint. Oh, it's a whiteboard, sorry. Mm. Uh, the title of my presentation is okay, embedding, you know. Ayan. Okay, let me now share this. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Okay. So um Itong, ano, itong uh, title na aking lecture is Embedding Social Sudat Economy in Local Communities. So, uh, Polanyi argued that the economy is embedded in the social realm. Uh, it has, can, you, can you make it less zoom? Because parang it, the margins are off. I don't know if it's me or... Is it yeah, me? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm here. Uh, wondering, ano ba itong... Ano na ito? Maybe zoom to a certain percent, like 100% lang. Okay. Let me, ano. Let me, um. Ano mo na, ha? Siguro, ano. There. How about that? Is that okay? Wait, I don't I don't see anything now. Class uh, wala akong nakita, sir. Wala akong nakita. Okay, sandali ha. Nakablock ang screen. Nakablock? Uh, yung, yung, yung lumabas, sir, ay... Maliit na bahagi ng desktop. Okay. Mm, share ko ulit. Um, ito. Yan. Can you see that? Uh, mukha mo ata, sir. Nakikita namin, sir. <laughs> Balikta data yung... <laughs> Balikta data yung... Ano, sir? Yung baka naka ibang setting yung share screen mo. Hmm. Okay. Just a moment. Kasi 
itong ano ko dapat lumabas ito eh itong ano ito share screen ko ulit about that Yan, nakita namin sir, medyo maliit lang nga lang po. Siguro I think it's in the view options ng Zoom na mismo. Kung i-play slide show ko kaya. Yan. Is that Ayan, better? Nakikita naman po. Oh nakikita. yeah, better. Can we go to the sir. next page? Huh? If you skip to the next page, let's see how it looks. Ah. Malaki na sir, kitang-kita na. Okay na, oh, parang yeah, looks good, looks parang good. Projector na. Ka parang naka present. Okay na, okay na. Proceed okay. po. Sige, so uh si ano itong Polanyi, I think uh some of you may know him, no? Argued that the economy is embedded in the social realm. It has a social purpose and is subordinate, subordinate separable from social relations. A framework that is very much at the heart of ECE movement today. He proposed four ideal type models of uh, in both pre capitalist and contemporary societies no? uh, the um, market economy and the non market economies, which include householding, relations among family members, redistribution, usually through the government, and reciprocity. According to Polanyi, the ECE economy is associated with the notion of reciprocity, which is understood as going beyond duality to giving and uh, uh, obligation to give in return that crosses two different subgroups of people together in solidarity. So in practice, solidarity includes more than reciprocity economy. As Laville has suggested, the uh, four different ideal types proposed by Purani are interdependent and uh, contributes to a more plural economy. So this perspective of Laville, ang sinasabi niya, ay yung market at saka non-market economies, they can coexist no? and contribute to a plural economy. Whereas yung Saripes, yung uh, continental network for the promotion of social that economy, ang kanyang argument is that solidarity economy is post-capitalist. It can become dominant economy. But because of reality ngayon, uh, I think itong perspective na Laville na pwedeng mag-coexist ang social society economy with market economy you know, uh, is a good ano, itong perspective kasi nandun tayo at the stage ngayon. No? Uh, marami nag, uh, itong, uh, nagtatanong eh, paano ba mag-exist yan together with the market capitalist market economy. You know? So with this perspective, we have uh, some uh, definition of terms. Itong uh, ano, uh, concept ng embed, no? to implant or firmly place something in a surrounding or environment. The local community ecosystem, uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, set, sub, set of people, living organisms, plus the environment, and uh, where the living organisms cannot be separated from the physical and chemical environment. So you know, ecosystem. No? So when we embed SSE, we're embedding it in an ecosystem. No? So ano ba ang embedding SSE in local communities? Ano bang ibig sabihin yan? No? Uh, well, it means embedding or implant, you know, firmly placing yung set of values and principles that we see in local communities. So... <clears throat> Ito talaga yung uh, pinaka gusto natin mangyari no? na may bagong mindset ang mga tao. Uh, binibigyan natin sa nilang bagong perspective. That's why itong uh, topic na ito is very crucial sapagkat from now on, yun ang pag-uusapan natin. No? Paano magkakaroon tayo ng mindset no? na yung values and principles of this e na intindihan natin at paano natin ito i-apply sa mga local communities. Now, ano ba yung values ng SSE? Uh, 
this is uh, this uh, set of values were defined by the National Labor Conference during its 100th session in June 2022. The first is care for people and planet. So care for people and planet is the social mission you know, and environmental mission of ECCE. It's for, for this purpose that ECCE exists to care for people and planet. And then the value of equal, equality and fairness. You know, Justice, social justice, equality, equity, fairness, uh, non-discrimination. The third is interdependence. Na um, tayo ay ano itong kasama ng ecosystem. Uh, we are part of the ecosystem, and we cannot live uh, alone. You know, we are dependent on each other. Kaya from the perspective of ECSE, it is solidarity. That's quite important rather than competition. Mutual aid is very important, cooperation, social cohesion, social inclusion. No? And then self-governance. Um, and ECC believes that people have the capability to govern themselves. No? This perspective goes against the grain of uh, many people saying that uh, kailangan yung mga uh, marunong no? ang dapat mag-govern. Uh, ang mga tao, they have innate capability to self-govern. No? Um, they know how to uh, exercise freedom, democracy, and participate you know, in uh, dialogues, in uh, governing themselves. Transparency and accountability. Napaka-importante nito sapagkat uh, in a situation where katulad nga, nga ang mga nakaraang mga governments natin, napaka-opaque, no? yung kanilang mga pinagagawa at uh, uh, isang araw na gugulantang na lang tayo na wala pala yung pan mayroong mga uh, nangyayaring kababalaghan na yung mga program pans ay hindi na ma-deliver sa mga tao. No? And then attainment of decent work and livelihood. Basically, the problem of uh, this uh, uh, neoliberal market economy is that na commodify ang labor you know pwede na siyang bilhin pwede na siyang uh, bigyan ng presyo no uh, yung humanity ng tao ay nawawala no so yung tinatawag na decent work at saka livelihood ito yung battle cry ng ILO this is the euphemism that ILO uh, uses in order to put back the humanity sa labor no uh, yung creative power ng labor na dapat ay mabigyan ng uh, dignity, mabigyan ng uh, recognition, ng kanyang contribution in creating value, economic value. You know? uh, so ito yung alim na values that distinguish ECC from other subsets of the economy. Now, yung mga principles naman no, that operationalize the ECC values. Number one, the ECC entity must be engaged in economic activity. It must be involved in wealth creation. It must be involved in creating wealth and redistributing wealth. No? Kasi kung yung entity is not involved in creating wealth, wala rin siyang participation sa pag-distribute ng wealth. No? E yung new liberal market economy is very good in creating wealth but limits the uh, distribution of wealth among those who own the capital. No? So uh, ito sa pagbabago ng ano ng economy uh, kailangan ang mga SEC entities must be engaged in economic activities meaning to say generating profit no kaya we are not against profit generation no profit is important the more, but uh, the the crux of the matter is that uh, is the distribution, redistribution of surplus or profit. No? Kasi any economy, economic system, has to generate a return, no? a surplus. Kasi uh, yung surplus is uh, uh, also signifies the growth in terms of the wealth of the nation. Kung ang population ay nag-grow, dapat ang wealth must also grow in order to uh, be able to provide for the needs of the, the, of the people. No? But um, uh, what is important 
when uh, the wealth of the nation grows is that the people benefits from it. You know? Na babalik yan para sa welfare niya at saka conservation ng environment. So that's why the second uh, principle is primacy of people and social purpose over capital in the distribution surpluses of profits as well as assets. Uh, ito yung pagkakaiba ng SSE sa market economy o capitalist economy kasi inuuna niya yung welfare ng tao no? at saka ng environment. So profit is generated for purposes of addressing the social protection uh, wants or needs ng mga tao and also the protection of the environment. No? And then contribution to decent work and the SDGs. Uh, kasi ang participation ng karamihan mga tao ay as workers. Ano? Uh, but in SSE, tatlong functions ang ginagawa ng mga tao. They own the means of production, they manage the economy, and they are also the workers. No? So makikita natin yan, for example, sa mga a cooperative na katulad ng Mondragon. No? The members are the workers, they are also the owners and managers of the cooperative. Uh, in that in that uh, particular sense, ano, uh, sapagkat ikaw ay manager, worker, at owner, decent yung trabaho mo. No? Uh, hindi ka lang ano dyan, itong uh, parang uh, makina ano? na gumagawa sa isang uh, factory or uh, isang company. You feel that uh, your work is dignified because you are co-owner as well as co-manager and also worker of the company. Mutual aid. Uh, this uh, ano itong, uh, uh, is one of the uh, principles that uh, operationalizes your interdependence, no? value ng interdependence ng mga uh, SEC entities and uh, yung mga workers niya at saka uh, actors. Then you have voluntary cooperation. So this is in contradiction to, in contrast to competition sa market economy or capitalist economy. Dito naman ay cooperation, pero hindi siya pilit, no? hindi siya mandated. It must be voluntary. No? Uh, so yun ang pagkakaiba niya na ang mga members, ay, they are free to join and to exit from an existing SEC entity. You know? Democratic and or participatory governance. Itong uh, democratic and participative governance uh, ay napakahalaga sapagkat ang namamahala sa SEC entities ang mga tao mismo. No? So it's different from the concept of socialism na ang means of production is owned and uh, managed by the government. No? Uh, so ang mga tao ay basically workers. No? Uh, so ownership at saka management ng resources is the function of the state sa socialism. But here in SSE, yung mga tao mismo, no? uh, ang ano itong um, namamahala, namamayari, no? and uh, they, they own ano, the, the means of production. And then autonomy and dependence, meaning to say they're autonomous from the influence of the government and the for-profit ano, uh, corporate uh, entities. No? Uh, maaring magkaroon ng ano itong collaboration between the non-market uh, economies and market economies pero uh, yung transactions na yan ay hindi pilitan no uh, it does not mean to say that one is uh, subordinate to the other yeah uh, merong autonomy and dependence ang mga operators na SEC entities so what kind of entities organized enterprises are potentially uh, you know, the ones that could embed the SSC in local communities. Uh, yung ano ulit, International Labor Conference, uh, yung sabi niya na ang uh, mga uh, SSC entities that uh, could embed SSC in local communities ay kasama katulad ng cooperatives, associations, mutual societies, foundations, social enterprises, separate groups, and other entities like networks you know, operating in accordance with the values and principles of SSE. Yeah. So yung first paragraph just uh, repeats na yung values ng SSE na pinopromote ng SSE entities. You know. 
and then SAC uh, entities as part of long-term viability and sustainability and to the transition of the informal to the formal economy. But it operates in all sectors of the economy. It means to say that the vision of ECSE is to transform the government and the business itself you know, to become more uh, a, a uh, socioeconomic system that puts people and planet over and above profit, over and above capital. So, uh, importante sa SEC ay yung mga tao at saka environment at doon ginagamit ang surplus, including taxes. Na kasi tax is part ng ano natin. Eh. Uh, you might say, uh, call it surplus no, ng, ng nation that is uh, surrendered to the government para ng gobyerno. Meron siya may tustos for the uh, social protection and uh, physical protection ng mga mambayan. Okay, so in other words, meron tayong values and principles that have to be embedded in local communities. At meron naman tayong mga workhorse no? or engines or uh, vehicles, instruments no? that could uh, make this happen. Uh, ito yung mga cooperatives, associations, military societies, foundations, social enterprise, separate groups, and networks no, like ASEC and RIPES and other, uh, other uh, alliances and uh, uh, mga leagues no, or, or coalitions. No. Uh, yung ano din, itong, uh, kung ibabalik ko, ano, yung set of principles, these are also the seven core features ng isang SSE entity. No? So, uh, magandang ano ito, Itong uh, balikan natin ito kasi if you want to know whether cooperative is an, is an SSC entity, itong principles na ito uh, could be used to evaluate kung yung cooperative ba yan is an SSC entity or not. Because uh, even if these organizations like cooperatives, mutual societies, associations have been identified by the International Labor Conference as SSC entities, they still have to pass the test. No? Kung sila ba ay nag-implement ng the carry or practice the principles that operationalize the AC values. So, pito yan, seven core features. We call them seven core features of the SSC entity. So that's why uh, if you want to know whether an organization is an SSC entity or not, no? whether it is a cooperative, foundation, separate group, social enterprise, and so forth. You use these seven uh, core anatom features in evaluating them. Later on, I will uh, share with you an instrument that you can use you know, to really pinpoint or to really gauge uh, whether an organization has, uh, is practicing these principles or not. No? O kaya, ilang alin sa mga principles na ito ang hindi niya pinapractice. No? Uh, so, there are many ways of looking at it. Uh, there might be uh, separate groups or cooperatives in that area, pero kulang siya ng uh, democratic or participatory governance. No? So, yung ganong mga uh, usapin are relevant no? for developing a capacity building program for these entities. So, uh, ito yung pag-aralan natin later on. But for today, I just wanted to uh, emphasize na itong set of principles na ito are also the seven core features of SEC entities. Okay, so <clears throat> ano ba yung uh, mga SEC entities and how are they defined? Ano? Uh, dito, uh, already uh, defined by ILO. No? Yung cooperative, we know that uh, an organization that is legally registered with the Cooperative Development Authority is a cooperative. No? But whether that uh, legally registered cooperative is an SEC entity or not, ayon isang ano, itong uh, kailangan pumasa siya sa test ano, ng seven core features ng SEC entity. Association is also registered with, uh, this registered with ECC, includes NGOs, no? civil society organizations. Yan. Uh, marami sa mga association ay uh, they engage in business also although they are registered as non, not for profit organizations so uh, 
meron silang ano itong uh, business like for example uh, association of uh, yung savings and credit association no? savings and credit association uh, yan ay isang association is also a mutual society so mutual society unlike cooperatives they do not have uh, equity share yung cooperative mayroon siyang equity share in mutual society like for example uh, uh, savings and credit association no? wala yan silang capital share nagko-contribute lang sila ng savings nila no and then yung savings ay ginagamit na uh, pang loan doon sa mga members no? so meron ding mutual society in the form of insurance no? mutual insurance or mutual insurance company uh, ang mga members may ari niyan at ang kanilang contribution diyan is the premium they buy the uh, the insurance policy foundation marami tayong foundation no Ngayon, marami sa foundation na also engage in development work or funding development work are foundations of for-profit, large for-profit corporations. No? Yan. So, yung old model uh, ng uh, big companies no, no? they do business and then they set up a foundation to do charity work. Yan. Katulad ng uh, Bill Gates Foundation, no? uh, Pineo niya, and then they funded it, and then it's doing charity work. Meron din BPI Foundation, Ayala Foundation, maraming foundation, uh, they are engaged in charity work, no? uh, they call it also development work. And uh, yun ang model, old model. No? Now, we have a new form of business enterprise, we call it social enterprise. These two functions are merged in one company. Yung social enterprise, ginagawa na rin niya yung kanyang charitable, ano, itong mission niya. Ano. So instead of uh, splitting the two functions of generating surplus and then using sur surplus for uh, benefiting society and uh, environmental protection, yung social enterprise, merge niya itong dalawang functions into one. Ano. So the social enterprise uses its uh, uh, ano interest or its its uh, profits ano, uh, for um, the uh, mission of uh, benefiting the people and conserving the environment and or conserving the environment. So please uh, remember that because ito yung bagong ano ito usbong no, na type ng business entity uh, sa ating panahon ngayon na nakita natin in the past kung gusto ng company for profit company na magkaroon ng uh, uh, itong charitable work nagtatayo siya ng foundation ngayon yung social enterprise yung function ng foundation sa function of for profit company na merge into one no? the only difference is that itong social enterprise na ito uses part or all of their profits for purposes of serving its social and or environmental mission. Yung separate group is like an association cooperative, pero they function in the informal economy kasi mostly they are, they are not registered. You know? Marami yan, like uh, what uh, JR said, no? uh, doon sa kanyang area of ano, to work uh, sa Marawi, mayroong mga separate group-like kind of ano, ito, entities. You know? Marami yan kasi when we were promoting separate groups, linking back and separate groups, sabi ko nga, pati yung mga ano dyan, itong chat group, no, uh, na mga, mga ano itong mga may bahay, eh ano na rin yun, separate group na rin yun, kasi uh, nag, nag, ano sila, nag, nag, uh, they, they share their lives, ano, they chat with each other, and uh, in the process, they try to alleviate yung kanila mga problema, no, kaya, Sabi ko sa Pilipinas maraming chismis group. Eh pwede mong gawing self-help group na rin yun. No? Uh, if you are able to transform them into an economic entity. Social movement and network is all part of these entities. Uh, kasi sila yung nagbibigay ng uh, integration. No? Integration of the uh, SSA entities. Uh, okay. So these are the types of SSA entities 
and we're going to come back to the, the, the uh, to them again no in our uh, uh ano natin itong lesson natin ngayong gabi ngayon ano ba ang situation ng mga SSC entities sa Pilipinas meaning to say yung cooperatives association foundation mutual society separate groups social enterprises and other entities no according to the statistics ng uh, PSA 92% of all enterprises in the Philippines are micro and small. This piece of the statistic also applies to SSA entities. No? Ibig sabihin, 92% ng ating mga SSA entities are micro and small. Okay. Many operate in the informal economy. Yeah? And then the SSA entities are fragmented. And then most of them are integrated in the... Uh, Profit-oriented, no? mga cartels at saka transnational corporations, global supply chains and transnational corporations. Uh, I think you have heard of the onion cartel and the garlic cartel in the Philippines. Halos lahat ng ating commodities cartelized no? in the Philippines. So, uh, fragmented sila kasi if you look at uh, the um, supply chain, no? for example, ng mga rice farmers, uh, Ang farmers na pupudus, they till the land, produce uh, palay, then have it uh, uh, mill. Tapos pupuntahan sila ng itinerant trader. Yung itinerant trader ay uh, agent yan ng mga cartels. So they buy. Itong farmer, sapagkat uh, gahon siya sa pera, uh, the farmer uh, would, would ano itong, tend to sell you can produce for cash immediately. You know? uh, kasi ayaw niya magbenta ng tingi-tingi. Gusto ng farmer, pag binenta niya yung kanyang produkto, lahat ay kukunin na uh, bibili. You know? So, for that reason, marami mga uh, producers natin are part of a cartelized uh, organization or global supply chain. You know? Ngayon, walang market base ang uh, or mga local consumers that patronize no SSA entities in uh, the same way that for example yung mga SSA entities in Europe uh, in Japan no, uh, are being patronized by yung talagang committed consumers no uh, you can see that in uh, the fair trade movement sa ano itong Europe meron talagang mga consumers sila who are dedicated, no? who, who buy intentionally, who buy fair trade products intentionally because they believe in fair trade. Yun ang kulang sa atin. No? Kasi uh, ano tayo, itong, uh, ang ating ano nga, uh, problema dito, yung ating pinag-usapan, consumerism, no? na ano tayo, na karoon tayo ng kaisipan na ang convenience store natin uh, over the years uh, is now represented by air-conditioned mega malls. No? So doon na tayo bumibili. Yeah. Uh, at uh, uh, doon sa ano na yan, ang mga produkto ng micro small enterprises ay nagigipit. No? Uh, they bring their, their products there and they have to wait three, four, even five, six months before they, they get paid uh, for their products. And then lack of consistent and robust governance policy support for the ACC entities. So, ang ano natin dito is that uh, embedding ACC uh, involves a cultural revolution. Uh, the cultural revolution is in terms of revitalizing the bayanan spirit uh, in support of the ACC entities. Kaya mindset ulit, no? renewing, renewing the mind. Kailangan magkaroon ng bagong pananaw ang mga ACC entities uh, sapagkat itong next na ano, itong slide na papakita ko sa inyo, ito yung current situation ng SA entities sa uh, local communities. No? Meron tayong cooperatives doon, meron mutual society, maaaring may social enterprise, maaaring may self-group group, foundations, association NGOs. Pero they are basically interacting with the ecosystem. Kanya-kanya. No? Kanya-kanya. Uh, because under the uh, influence of a competitive no, market-oriented economy based on competition, 
naka-focus ang bawat isa sa development ng kanilang organization at saka pag uh, latag ng kanilang mga projects and program. No? Kaya kulang ang synergy. Kulang ang interaction ng bawat isa. So, uh, mahirap kung ganon na mabuo no? yung embedding ng SSC sa local communities kung kulang ang synergy ng mga SSC entities. No? That's why, uh, ang inaadvocate ko ay yung whole of community approach. No? Bawat isa magkaroon ng pananaw na whole of community, hindi lang program or project ang kanyang ano, itong inaatupag, hindi lang organization niya. But whole of community, and dyan naman yung foundation, may charity work siya. Andyan yung uh, social enterprises, meron siya ano, itong products and services. No? But hindi mag-usap. If you go to a community in South Korea, for example, you can see this. Ano? Na yung eskwilahan, nakikialam doon sa ano, itong uh, Uh, saan yung binibenta yung ano mga produkto ng mga uh, enterprises ano mga social enterprises so talagang yung sistema nila yung kanilang SSE ecosystem nag-uusap no may synergy ang bawat entity no cooperative ka man association ka man NGO foundation no separate group whatever no nag-uusap sila meron silang role Uh, they, they play the role and they, they work together, they help one another. No, may synergy, mayroong integration of ano, itong approach. You know? Yun ang kulang sa ating mga local communities. No? When you go to the local community, uh, ang, uh, kapag ka, ang bandila mo ay isang organization, yun lang yung ang, ano mo, focus mo, yung organization mo. No? But uh, ang perspective ng SSE, dapat mayroong synergy. Mayroong working together. No? Okay. So embedding SC in local community involves a synergy, synergistic collaboration among SC entities in undertaking a whole of community development approach. Uh, Kakaiba ito sa program or project-oriented approach. No? Uh, kung whole of community at ikaw ay namamahal na lang sa education, eh kailangan ka makipag-collaborate doon sa iba that they are impacting other aspects of the community. No? Merong iba dyan ay may nag-recycle sa environment sila. Dapat merong interaction. In one community that uh, we visited in 2019 sa Indonesia, ang kanilang main ano, itong social enterprise is the community kitchen. The community kitchen became the enterprise that connected yung buong ano, ng economy. Uh, so, yung mga waste ng ano, community kitchen, nire-recycle nila. No? And then yung mga suppliers, uh, they ano, itong, uh, uh, talk to the uh, community kitchen, ano mo dapat na isupply, and so forth and so on. So mayroong synergy. The different organizations, including the local government. No? So they were able to attract support from the local government kasi syempre yung trabaho ng ano, local officials ay eh, napag napagaan. No? became lighter because uh, the uh, people themselves are the ones undertaking development of the community. Uh, like I said, uh, kailangan natin ng cultural revolution. That means to say, renewing of the mindset. No? Uh, Mag-iba talaga ng perspective. At i-revitalize natin yung Bayanian spirit. No? Uh, kasi yung Bayanian spirit, okay pa rin yan, still alive in the Filipino uh, culture. Kaya lang it comes out, it emerges during times of crisis like earthquake, uh, storm, no? may bagyo, gano. Uh, all over the world, nagtutulungan mga Pilipino dito. Pero pagka nawala na yon sa everyday life, nawawala na yung bayanihan. No? So kaya lang i-revive natin yon And uh, this is a challenge for the job of social work or community development. Okay. So, what are the strategies for embedding SSC in local communities? Uh, I've cited only three here, but uh, these three are ano, itong, uh, sort of uh, represent many approaches. Ano? Yung tinatawag nating set hat group approach ano, or bootstrap approach. Ano? Itong uh, set hat group approach, yung kalang initiative is set funded by the SSC entities. How? They mobilize savings. Yan, yung ating pinag-usapan kanya. They pull yung liquidity nila. No? 
Savings is just excess liquidity. No? Uh, it is not uh, the amount of money that is left after you have consumed. No? It's just excess liquidity. The money in your pocket is excess liquidity for the moment. Yeah. So there's so many excess liquidity in the rural areas. Kailang hindi ito na mobilize. No. That's why the Central Bank of the Philippines, Banco Central ng Pilipinas, is advocating no, to online uh, ATM, uh, yung mga iba-iba pang mga uh, application, digital app, ano, technology, in order to enable the uh, rural population no, uh, to put their money into the bank. No? Uh, yung project na initiate uh, ko sa, ano, sa India, uh, nag-organize ng separate group, sila ang nag-mobilize ng, ano, ng savings sa community. Yeah? And then they put this in the bank and negotiated with the bank. Kung ito yung pera namin, magkano yung papahira mo sa amin? No? Uh, so sa MPSA, one is to one. For every one rupee deposit, the bank will lend them one rupee. And then as they show that they are able to repay 100%, lumalaki yung ratio ng loan to deposit. No? Until sa isang ano, itong case study na nabasa ko, mayroong 1 is to 8 ang ratio. No? For every 1 rupee na inilagay ng ano, self-help group sa banko, nagpapahiram ng 8 rupee yung banko. No? Kasi mayroon siyang sariling intermediation system, yung mga, mga pool. No? So, uh, ang isang ano dito, example, ay yung Association of Sarbas Seba Farms. Ano? This is a uh, Gandhian organization, meaning to say it follows the principle of Gandhi. Actually, Gandhi is the first one to say he doesn't want anybody to be left behind. So yung mantra na yan ng uh, ano nga yan, UN, uh, no one to be left behind. Actually, it's a Gandhian principle din. No? Ngayon, itong ASEPA is an association that works with self-help groups in 11,000 villages. No? Uh, meron lang 5 million people. I think now it's 6 million already. You know? uh, and uh, they have the uh, entrepreneurship develop, enterprise development programs at saka social protection programs. You know, itong ASEFA. Why? Because ASEFA from the very start impressed on the SEFA groups. Yung profit na kalang enterprise, no? like MERC, yung profit dyan, hindi didistribute sa mga members. Pinupul nila ito at ito ang ginagamit nila to provide social protection programs sa mga ano, itong members nila. No? So in other words, 100% of the profit of this association is plowed back to provide social protection benefits to the members. No? So uh, you can call it also social enterprise pero ito nga ang ginawa nila uh, ng, ng ASEPA. Ito yung kanilang mga enterprise development programs. Agriculture development, dairy promotion, micro-enterprise development, social credit. Itong social credit nila ay zero interest rate. No? Ang kanilang ano, itong argument dito, e pera naman ito ng tao. No? At sa kagagamitin naman ito sa uh, value-creating enterprise. No? At yung profit dyan ay babalik naman sa atin. No? So napakagandang ano. Itong dairy promotion, ang uh, gumagawa niyan ay kababaihan yung mga nanay. Ano? Kasi alam niyo sa India, yung, yung kanilang cattle doon ay hindi nila kinakain. No? Hindi nila kumakain ng beef. Rather, uh, the dairy ano, project in India is used for milk production. Kaya sa India, there is what is called white revolution. Sapagkat uh, dumami yung pupudos ng milk doon. No? So sa India, doon na ako nakatikim ng milk with coffee. Di ba sa atin, coffee with milk? No? Doon iba eh. Milk with coffee doon. No? Bakit? Sapagkat ang kanila you know, itong ilalagay sa baso mo, sa, sa mag mo, ay mainit na milk. No? Three-fourths noon milk. Tapos idadagdag mo yung uh, powdered ano, coffee. Ano? Kaya sabi ko, baliktad ito sa aming bansa. We call it coffee with milk. But here in India, you have milk with coffee. No? Kaya napakasarap ng kanilang ano doon, milk with coffee. No? Okay. 
uh, ano yung kanilang social protection programs? Una sa education. Comprehensive. Mula sa Balwadi. Balwadi means preschool. Ano? Hanggang sa Technical Training Institute. No? Yung Technical Training Institute nila ay para sa kanilang uh, livelihood ng mga micro-enterprise nila. No? So, uh, very ano, itong, uh, integrated. No? Integrated yung kanilang economy. Yan. And then, rural habitat promotion environment nila. No? Na yung kanilang ano, mga ba ina-upgrade nila kasi sa India, yung mga bahay ng mga poor ay talagang ano itong uh, very uh, dilapidated, mabaho. No? Yan. So itong ginagawa ng, ano, ng ASEPA, out of the uh, surplus that they generate, they now uh, renovate no? or construct new houses for the, uh, for the members. Ano? Yan. Then meron silang health care. No? Uh, kung hindi ma-provide na kalang health care center, they link them to the government ano, itong centers. No? Meron silang life and non-life insurance no? by, uh, by insurance from insurance companies. So ito yung ano, itong social protection programs. It's a people-oriented kind of system. Pwede. No? And this is people's governance. No? They are not relying so much on the government to provide these things to them. No? So they have a created ano, itong, uh, uh, itong a system. And when the concept of social society economy was presented to the founders, sabi niya, this is the economy that we have been working on, but we don't have a name for it. No? Uh, so ito yung ano, itong, they have been able to do this because if you have a mass base of five, six million, self-sufficient ka. No? Pero kung 50 lang yan, 100, eh, hindi ka pa rin ano dyan. That's why it's very important for itong SSA entities to work, work with each other no? and create a mass base of consumers no? uh, so that uh, mapul talaga nila yung uh, surplus created by the enterprises. Number two, strategy, networking approach. No? Ngayon itong examples na ito, ay uh, galing sa ano. Can you see ano? Itong book na ito. This is uh, the Philippine Journal of Social Development. No? I'll show it to you later on. Uh, uh, sir, I, I, sir, excuse me. I think naka, naka ano po yung video nyo. Hindi namin makita okay, yung okay, pinakita. Yes, yes. I'll show it later. No? I'll show it later. Yung networking approach ay uh, ibig sabihin yan, yung SSA entity ay uh, it already starting, no? Uh, talking to at saka ano itong uh, collaborating with other SSA entities. Yan. Uh, yung ASEPA, nung umpisa niya, talagang ano lang siya. Talagang uh, uh, self-sufficient siya. No? But later on, marami na rin siya ano, ito mga uh, organizations that uh, help it kasi of course success uh, beget success no attract some successful people. Yan. Itong ano ito example na sabi ko nga uh, kinuha ko galing ito sa article na or study ni Dr. Natalie Verseres ano sa informal economy she calls it feminist solidarity social solidarity economy yung cooperative of women in health and development o cowhead ng mga Tiboli tinalak weavers no sa sa Lake Cebu so uh, this uh, cooperative became so successful ano uh, na they have attracted uh, the technical and funding support of the likes of FAO, ILO, Government of Finland, and all others. No? Marami na silang ano ngayon, itong mga tumutulong sa kanila. And so, it's possible when the ACC entity already achieves a level of success. No? And then, yung Patamaba. And I think uh, many of you know this. No? Yung Patamaba, pambansang kalipunan mga gagawang informal sa Pilipinas, uh, they have 73,000 members uh, all over the Philippines. No? Uh, matagal ko nang uh, recommended dito mag, mag savings ano sila. No? Ito patama. Mas biro mo yung 73,000. Kahit na piso araw-araw lang yan, 73,000 per day times 30. Eh, magkano na yun? No? Um, so, um, malaking bagay yung ano, itong magkaroon ng kanyang mass base. Ano? Uh, but uh, to highlight yung kanyang networking effort, no? sabi ng Patamaba, yung networking serves various purposes like 
raising awareness, advocacy, information dissemination, fundraising, accessing services, policy advocacy. Ngayon, Patamaba itself has received support from Canada via the Diwata Foundation, Dani the Fund, IL Dani the Fund, Binhing Makabayan, Zonda Club, at saka Department of Labor and um, Employment. And then yung kilos, no? kababayang iisang layuning umundad ang sambayanan. Ito yung uh, cooperative na ito collaborates with women's groups. No? Uh, maaring self-help groups, maaring associations all over the Philippines to transform yung mga waste products into saleable products. And ito mga products nila have already penetrated international markets. And because of that, they have also attracted several organizations to partner with them. Now, ito yung source ng information nito, si Dr. Nathalie Aversenes, Livelihood Practices of Women in Transforming Economy, Forging Pathways Towards a Feminist Solidarity Economy. Ito yung kanyang PhD thesis. The third and last, and I will end my lecture here, is shared responsibilities between CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility Companies, and SEC entities. So mayroong mga CSR companies. Ano? These are companies that are participating in the UNDP call for corporate social responsibility. Ngayon, uh, ang uh, uh, notion na ito, ang concept na ito, ang uh, sinasabi niya ay yung platform ng shared responsibility. Uh, it, this, was, uh, this concept was promoted by UN also, yung shared responsibility. No? It's a framework for cooperation that can spark collaboration of CSR companies and ACCNTs to meet specific needs of the people. Example, Jollibee Foods Corporation. Uh, ang Jollibee Foods Corporation, meron silang uh, yung bridging uh, farmers, small farmers to Jollibee supply chain. Uh, growing onion. Uh, meron specifications ang Jollibee dyan, dapat maputi, may size siya, gano'n. No? Uh, at uh, kailangan ay ano siya, organic. No? O, kung maaari, hindi na sila dapat gumamit ng fert chemical fertilizer, yung mga, yung mga, ano, yung mga farmers. No? So, mga farmers who are uh, complying to these standards ng Jollibee are able to market yung products nila bullion no? uh, in bulk. And uh, they get ano, ito, a good price for their products. Yung mga reject, yung mga hindi pumapasa, the uh, cooperative or the association sells it in the local market. No? So ang perspective na ito, according to the author of this, and I will reveal to you later who's the author, no? I, if you bring together no, yung uh, CSR company like uh, Jollibee Food Corporation, with social enterprises or organizations ng mga farmers in partnership, no? it will create maximum impact for both stakeholders. No? So, uh, isa ito, uh, one way of winning over no? yung mga for-profit companies to support yung uh, SSC entities. No? At uh, when the initiatives of the SSC entities are supported by CSR companies, they are also helping in a way the embedding of SSE in local communities. Ito yung uh, wisdom na napulot natin sa uh, itong strategy na ito. And this is contributed by uh, classmate ninyo dito, si uh, Tin Palomo, no? uh, sa kanyang article in the same journal. I was just and... wondering where you got this from. <laughs> okay. It's here. No, I'll show you later. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, the Philippine Journal of Social Development. They should get a copy of this. So, ano, I end my presentation here. No? And uh, I'll ano, itong, uh, open the floor for a reflection and discussion. Uh, we have uh, about 30 minutes more. So any any reaction? So then, uh, I will uh, stop sharing. And um, show you the other. Okay, can you see me now? Ah, wala, wala. Ito yun, no? Yes, that's the book. 
you can buy ano itong itong volume na ito no this is uh, volume 6 number 1 2014 diyan sa VSWD no sa UP College of Social Work sa library i think no uh kabili kaya and dito yung ano this is a uh, volume focusing on social society kan dito nag video ano mo tin no yung article mo yes uh, Okay. Oh God, but so, I think my views have changed so much since then, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, but but the uh, the uh, seminal ano, the idea is there. Na pwede pwede ang SSC entity uh, may kapag collaborate sa for profit company if the for profit company has a CSR agenda, no? Uh, kasi yung CSR agenda ngayon ay ano itong um, uh, very popular yan, no? especially with the sustainable development course. But your own concept now, social enterprise, ay ngayon iba na, no? Kasi yung social enterprise defined by ILO is a for-profit company, no? Hindi siya non-profit. It's a for-profit company. And definitions of social enterprise in Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, even Vietnam, uh, refers to this kind of Entities now for profit, sila, but they allocate part or all of the profit for the social environmental mission of the company. No, so uh, hindi lang tayo ngayon nakakaroon ng mga CSR companies. We have for profit companies that are really social enterprises. So, yun ang development, bagong development sa uh, itong um, economy, and uh, uh marami dyan, ay mga bata no they are young people uh, they are ambitious and they want to contribute no uh, to poverty elevation in the country okay um, any reflection so now uh, you understand why where i'm coming from why i would like you know, to be, to talk or to discuss individually with you regarding your work you know uh, kasi uh, the whole ano, itong, uh, session, no? entire session from now on, will be on SSE. No? Uh, kasi napag-aralan na natin anong problema. Eh. Uh, so, alam na natin yung problema, anong solusyon? No? We have a potential solution, SSE, but how do we work it out? No? How do we work it out? So, yun, um, in summary, embedding your SEC is very much uh, involves changing the mindset. Kaya uh, ang gagaw ang ating mission ay to bring you know this mindset uh, so that uh, we can we can uh, transform the mindset of people, including the potential SEC entities themselves. You know? Kasi sila. Uh, hindi na alam na meron palang ganun. No? Uh, so, mer yan sinasabi, ay, kung, kung si Thomas Hobbes ba o si John Locke, well, sabi na people um, want and uh, desire uh, the um, goal that they do not see. Yeah. Meron ganun eh. Naalala ko pa yung aking philosophy one. Eh, no? Maraming mga tao nagnanasa isang bagay na hindi na nakikita. No? So pag na, pinakita natin na meron pa lang SSE, katulad ng ASEPA, sinabi nung ano, si Mr. Luganatan, iyan ang gusto namin marinig kasi yan ang aming ginagawa. Yan. Meron pa lang brand yan, meron pa lang tatak yan. yan. Okay, so uh, any reflection or any reaction sa ating lesson today? What uh, strikes you most doon sa sa lecture natin ngayon. Sir, if I may ano, uh, I'm I'm contemplating on SSE as a as a phenomenon, as a movement na nabanggit nyo nga kanina, uh, it takes a lot of changing of minds in, hindi lang dun sa tao. Right now, I'm looking at the entities, yung mga NGOs, yung mga social uh, social movements, social groups. Kasi in terms of changing of mind, I think ang 
ang weather, ang temperature on the field is still that uh, we being NGOs and we are being foundation, medium lang kami. Uh, we are just a conduit of the donations and the funds and we have to dispense them in the most just way uh, that we can, equitable way that we can to the community. So, wala sa mentality nila, wala sa wala sa pilosopiya nila, sa principle nila na yung number one characteristic ng SSE na nabanggit nyo kanina. We we have to be involved in producing, uh, re, ano, we have to be involved in producing wealth. Yes. Kasi as far as they are concerned, we're just conduit. Mga daluyan lang tayo ng mga binibigay na excess, tapos dispensary tayo sa mga tao. But they themselves, ay hindi tayo hindi yata tayo dapat involved sa pag-produce ng wealth kasi hindi naman tayo business, di ba? Ang parang ganun yung temperature and weather on the field na na iniisip ko nga kaya in terms of a phenomenon of movement, baka yung mga kagaya namin na social development workers, we can contribute on that yung promotion of a of a renewed mindset towards doing uh, social services na hindi ta, hindi hindi pwede po kasi na nasa dispensary lang tayo re, uh, recipient and dispensary we have to be involved in the production of wealth and distribution mas magiging effective tayo sa distribution if we ourselves produce wealth and pagdating naman po sa tao yung changing of mindset ng mga tao na iniisip ko in actual very heavy siya sa ano magiging very heavy ito sa building relationships at saka social cohesion kasi sa context ng Pinoy pag pera-pera ang usapan lalo na sa mga local community trust issue yan trust issue yung ano kaya i think ang malaking investment in terms of strategy and approach is building that social cohesion mutual trust uh relationship uh, na o oh, hindi lang tayo basta magkakabarangay magkakapitbahay ano na tayo ngayon, kapatiran na tayo, mag, uh, magkakabahagi tayo towards production of wealth, which is, I think it's a, it's something new, it's something new sa sa context po natin. So parang yung dalawang level po na yun yung kinocontemplate ko as I was listening. Maraming salamat, John, kasi alam mo, uh, yung sa aking lecture, I have not touched on the relations, ano? I have only ano, touched about the mindset. Yan. But when you ground the mindset you have to build relations you are right no hindi po pwedeng walang relation eh no kasi tao yung kausap natin ng mga entities na yan and i really appreciated that kasi sabi nga ni Polanyi ang SSE is a relational ano itong uh, system no? based on uh, relations ng mga tao talagang may interaction ng mga tao ano so uh, for that reason yung thing ating ginagawa ngayon Uh, we're interacting ano we are we are ano we have to interact we have to share yung ating mga ideas we have to share our experience ano? because that's the only way we can build no communities yan kasi kung ang ating ano tong attitude dito sa learning natin ah may lecture ganyan mag-exam tayo no? I mean the usual academic ano exercise ano uh, wala mangyayari diyan eh we're only for the grade ano yan yun ang ano ng ating education system no? uh, kailang pumasaka kailang ano tum uno yung ano mo yung ano mo jan grade mo jan ano bahala na kung ano tum anong para ano basta mapuno ka jan so academic excellence ang ano yan hindi yung social impact no yan so doesn't matter kung relasyon mo sa ano sa itong uh, lecturer ay um, Uh, hindi intimate kundi ano lang no uh, yung formal no yan eh hindi ganyan yung SSE eh, no yung isip talaga engage ka eh no pati emotion mo yan no the emotion mo so yun ang ano diyan pagkakaiba na talaga andun yung bayanihan andun yung bayanihan ano? kaya uh, that's why i want to get involved in what you are doing kasi if you really understand yung process na yan then you can teach other people No? Kasi every one of you has your own sphere of influence. No? Meron kayong sarili niyong mga spheres of influence. And uh, that's one way of cascading itong mindset na ito 
at the same time building relations. Okay, thank you for that, John, for bringing up your uh, pact of uh, interpersonal relationships. Who else would like to uh, comment? Sir? Yes, Kabil. Yung pagdinilay ko po, may kinalaman sa Jeepney Modernization Act. Okay. Kasi dun po sa programa, isusuko ng Jeepney Operator yung kanilang individual franchise para mapabilang sa cooperative na nasa ilalim ng fleet management uh, system. At yung bawat kooperatiba, kailangan may labing limang imported minibuses kada ruta. Mabigat yun sa operator uh, kasi 2.4 to 2.8 million yung halaga ng bawat isang minibus. Uh, kumpara mo sa traditional jeepney na 200 to 600,000 lang kada unit. Tinitingnan ko po yung pinakita yung core features ng SSE at sa mabilisang evaluation lang na ginawa ko, maaring hindi pasok dito yung ilang mga quote-unquote cooperative. Yes. Uh, bilang halimbawa, hindi siya voluntaryo kasi pinilit lang ng gobyerno, uh, yes. hindi rin nakakaambag sa disenteng paggawa. Kaya yung tanong ko po, paano po yung unang hakbang? Siyempre maraming steps na kailangan gawin at complex yung issue na to. Pero ano po yung pwedeng gawin ng mga kooperatiba para makatulong sa makatarungang transition na hindi maiiwan ang mga chopper po ng jeepney? Magandang tanong yan kami, no? Very deep yung ano na yan. Kasi uh, kung ako yung ano, operator ng ano, uh, nasa loob ng mga itong samahan ng mga uh, jeepney owners sa ka drivers ano I I will build ano ito ng pan no? kasi gusto kong bilhin yung ano bilhin yung prangkesa ano yan uh, walang ganung mindset kasi ang mga operators ang mga drivers natin ano kanya-kanya sila wala silang solidarity no yun ang kulang sa kanila kasi pero mo uh, yung kanilang kinikita araw-araw Uh, kuminsan nga yung kanilang binibigay sa mga ano eh pang ano lang pang tip o yung uh, mga ano dyan mga dispatches ano uh, kung meron sigurong 50 isang araw mahina yon imagine kung naglalagay sila ng pondo no? over the years yeah? they could have transformed yung kanilang vehicles ano from the very start yan kaso walang pagkakaisa no so ngayon how do we ano how do we uh, uh, go about that no again kung meron tayong kakilala diyan at may makakausap tayo no pwede tayong magkaroon ng seminar sa kanila yan katulad dito no may mga kaibigan ako dito sa Batasan Batasan Hills ganyan narinig nila ang aking sinasabi sabi nila may ben pwede bang ano Kung mag-seminar ka dito, o oh, sige, seminar ako dyan. No? Yan. So in other words, uh, katulad niyan, mga dito, marami. Itong Batasan is isa sa pinakamalaking barangay ito. O kaya pinakamalaking barangay ng Quezon City. At dito ng mga tricycle drivers, kina kinausa ko yung ano, itong, uh, ano dito, yung uh, barangay captain. No? Tinanong ko ilan po yung ano dito, mga... Association organization na ano itong naka-register. Meron bang 100,000? No. Mga siguro po 400,000 sabi niya. No? So imagine that mga <laughs> usap mo yun. No? Uh, so in other words, uh, engaging these ano itong organizations uh, in order that you can uh, you can share your own mindset no. Uh, there's another way of doing things. Yeah. Uh, so Yun lang naisip kong paraan kasi uh, merong iba dyan ay magpapanukala ng ano, itong policy sa gobyerno kaagad. Ano? Dapat ganito gawin ng gobyerno. Yan. Eh, pero ang ano, point and action ng ECC hindi sa gobyerno. Eh, no? Ang praxis ng action ng ECC doon mismo sa mga uh, membro ng ano, organization. Ano ang dapat nilang gawin? Ganun. So This is ano itong one of the uh, yung bang differences no ng ECC from the other advocacy groups no kasi makikita mo ibang advocacy groups they they hard on the government to do to do things no to ano to have policy programs ganyan no? yan eh samantalang dito sa ECC we are talking to people no ito yung gawin ninyo para sa ganun 
you would be autonomous and independent of the government. No? Uh, hindi ka dependent sa gobyerno. Yan. Kasi kung dependent ka sa gobyerno, ikaw wawa ka po yung gobyerno ay korap. No? Hindi ka maka-influence sa... For example, in Japan, one of the largest cooperative is ano yung uh, uh, Sikacho Club. Sikacho Club is a cooperative of women. No? Kababaihan sila. Comprised of mga ano itong uh, nanay, no? housewives. Nag-umpisa yun when a group of housewives decided na they will buy in bulk. No? So they realized that when they buy in bulk, malaking discount. And then second ano, stage sabi na, why don't we talk directly to the farmers? No? Uh, ginawa nila yun. No? So mas malaking discount na yun. Bumaba yung pressure kasi direction sa producers. No? So they realized na if they talk directly to the producers, they will be ano, itong, uh, cutting the price steeply. No? They will be buying at a very low price. Yeah. That's why they set up ito and then they convinced many other ano, itong, uh, mga nanay sa households until they have now reached siguro, more than 1 million or more, 1 million members. No? And they have assets of billion. And meron silang mga distribution centers na kasi laki ng Araneta Coalition. No? Doon kinukuha ng mga, mga, ano, mga members na yung mga binili nila. No? So in other words, uh, big things like SSE starts with small steps. No? Yan. Uh, if I could, ano itong, for example, have time to talk to tricycle drivers, I will, ano, I will uh, uh, discuss with them how they can build unity by sharing. Ang pera, ang pinakamadaling i-share. You know? Sabi ko nga sa mga farmers, mahirap mag-share ano, mag kung kalabaw ang ano, ating uh, pinagtitipon-tipon ano, o bahay o lupa. Ang hirap mo. Pero pera, kahit na isang sinta mo, one sintabo, one, one peso, pwede mo i-share. You know? That's why yung pera uh, is a means of unifying and I use the least amount no, to unify peso. Yan. Hindi 1,000 peso. So there must be a way to spark no, the interest in uniting the members of an association or a group. No? Kasi nga umatak-matak sila kahit na meron sila association, ang mga jeepney drivers, kanya-kanya. Kanya-kanya. No? If you look at the operations of a credit cooperative, Yung kanilang ano lang, solidarity ay doon sa kanilang pondo. No? Pero yung kanilang mga enterprise, kanya-kanya sila. They borrow from the fund to run their individual enterprises. Yan. So, unlike uh, yung Mondragon Cooperative, pagka mayroong enterprise in set up ang ano, Mondragon, ang nagmamayari niya, yung mga members collectively. Ang mga workers are the members collectively. You know, and the managers are the members collectively. That doesn't happen sa ating economy. Yung 92% na market small enterprises natin, kanya-kanya sila. No? They are just like tiny bubbles of ano, itong water spread over a big surface. No? Mamaya, nag-evaporate na sila. No? Ganyan nangyayari sa mga market small enterprises natin. And it's happening with the itong operators. Ano? They are now confronted with the government that wants to change no? yung uh, kanilang pinagbabiyahe kasi uh, they're looking into the comfort ng mga commuters, no? mga pasahero, uh, at the expense of the ano, itong drivers. Ano? So yun lang aking ano, dyan, itong take dyan. Uh, uh, there are two ways of looking at it. We can recommend something to the government. Uh, I'm very sure na yung SSE will not be ano will not ring a bell to them no uh, kasi meron na silang ano blueprint no ito ang dapat niyong gawin meron na kaming ano pinagawang ano diyan mga bagong ano bagong itong chipney no? so mahirap talaga ano yun yan itong i-resolve yan kasi hindi handa ang uh, chipney operators to become autonomous and independent Nag-guess mo yun. Kapag ka autonomous and independent sa gobyerno, yan. They can say, 
Thank you very much, Mr. Government. But no, we have our own uh, ano itong, uh, uh, innovation program. So autonomy and independence is very crucial no? for ACC entities. Once they have that, they can negotiate with the government on a uh, on an equal equal level. You know, pa. Who else would like to comment, share their ano itong ideas? Pero pa, anyone? Okay, so kung wala na, I will share you my ano, my PowerPoint ano, and then I will follow up with uh, yung aking suggestion on uh, karantayan ng consultation to focus on what you are doing uh, so that um, ang aking objective is to prepare you no? uh, to be uh, advocates of SSE in your sphere of influence. Yan. Okay, so uh, with this, uh, um, any ano itong uh, Any words from uh, no, from uh, Dr. Justin? No. Uh, sir, any preparation for next week? Yeah. Uh, for 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 next week, uh, I will be uh, setting up your mga dialogues, ano, during consultation time, and then um, yung ano yung discussion points, no, for. Uh, the uh, next uh, Monday, I will send it ano, in advance. Ano. So yung ating, ano, yung ating uh, uh, parang um, template natin ating, ano, ng ating uh, class. Meron tayong palaging discussion ano, uh, so that you don't have to review. No? Yung discussion na yan will ano, impress in you the more important things about uh, yung course na ito. And and uh, the discussion will always come back to the previous ano, itong, uh, lecture. At, um, uh, I would like to just remind you that our midterms will be after yung, ano, yung, uh, si Mana Santa. Because we don't have class in si Mana Santa. Na yan. So uh, I will be... Uh, suggesting you know, uh, to each one of you yung, yung date sa time ng dialogue or consulting. No? Kasi required yan ng, ano, eh, ng college eh, no? na may consulting hours pala yan. So I'd like to make use of that to have a uh, discussion with you no? uh, tungkol sa inyong ginagawa and uh, how we can uh, probably no, do some um experiment how to embed is is e no those uh, uh ano ninyo, itong field of endeavor ninyo. whether it is uh teaching a class or designing a program no? yeah okay so kung wala nang ano thank you very much for uh, attending ano tayo ngayon uh 100% attendance tayo ngayon. No? At uh, maganda yung ating uh, discussion. Uh, and I hope that we can maintain this enthusiasm and interest no? in the coming uh, sessions. Thank you. Thank you, Justine, for hosting. And thank yeah. you to all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. classmates. Good night. Thank Bye. you, sir. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.